on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now come on in. Now come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Right? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Sorry, y'all. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm here. I'm here, girl. I'm here. I know. I know. I'm running behind, but I'm here, okay? Listen, girl, we got to go ahead and get into weekends on own because I absolutely have to get into all of this mess with Mel and Martel. Now, I haven't seen anything as of this morning, but I did see Martel's video last night, so we going we gonna to skim through that a little bit, Okay. Shout out to Jamie. And then we're going to uh, read through Mel's stories, okay, at the end of the video. So hold on, okay? Hold on. Um, Let's let's start with Ready to Love. <clears throat> Check Martel's story. Somebody put it in a Discord. If there's something, put it in the Discord, girl. Okay? Put it in the Discord, girl. Put it in the Discord, girl. What? Put it in the Discord, girl. What? What? Okay, hold up. Mmm. Mmm. Are y'all liking the video as y'all come in? I'm, I'm going through. I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, no. Okay, yeah, no. I see it. I see y'all put it in there. Thank y'all. Ransom with Ricardo and, um, and Nola Reads. <laughs> <clears throat> thank y'all so much for putting everything in the uh in the discord for me thank you all right so now i got that so let's go ahead um y'all kill me the way y'all do that to mel mel be over there minding her business this nigga start going crazy and y'all be like the both of them work on my nerves and i just kind of be like what did she do <laughs> what did she do besides respond which y'all you know i don't know i don't know but anyway you know y'all gonna act like oh it's kind of on my time girl all right Listen, all I know is if a man look that bad, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going out. I'm not going to ever out here. Like, just forget how bad he look. Like, no, like you're not going to get me to believe nothing that he's talking about. You're just not. <clears throat> okay. You're just not. Why is he doing all of this? What's the purpose? Okay. Why you ain't trying to get Ariane kid? Like, why, why are you just trying to argue, you know, about these children with, with Mel? So many questions that I have. We're gonna get into that though at the end. All right, because I want to get I want to get to this foolishness first. Okay. <clears throat> so where is it at? Did y'all see my baby boy now that we're grown review? Before we get into it, before we really get into it, girl. Did y'all see? It was fun, it was a good time. Okay. I also did boomerang before that. If y'all missed that one as well, that was a good one as well. Yes, thank you so much, everyone, for coming through for those now that were grown reviews. I love those. I also have a very special one coming up. <clears throat> so that's why we need to go ahead and get through this, okay? Um, <laughs> but I need you to go to Mel's blog event and help. Uh, I, I should be. I should be. We'll see. I should be. <laughs> I should be there. We'll see. Um, but let's. Hold up, let me see something. Okay, that's still downloading. Okay, um, hopefully y'all are hearing and seeing me clearly because I have a lot of things going on behind the screen. As y'all see, I have a new intro. I also have a new ad. Um, but it's already running behind, so I was like, girl, we just got to go ahead and do this. I have done so food. There's actually a playlist on my YouTube page. If you go to the homepage and go to the playlist, there is a Now That We're Grown playlist that has all of the Now That We're Growns that I have done thus far. <clears throat> I have so many more I want to do. We're going to do white people. We're going to do uh, some Disney ones. You know, all of, the, all of the things that we thought weren't problematic before, but now looking at it with new eyes, <sighs> shit is problematic. Okay. Which brings me to Ready to Love. Or should I say ready to fuck? Yeah. That's what it more so seems like. Okay. So they give Justice Zoe and L <clears throat> excuse me and LJ an opportunity to save themselves because you know they were on the bottom. Justice and Zoe meet with Tommy. 
Tommy tells, oh, you know, LJ was there too. Tommy tells LJ that the women say he's too friendly, meaning they don't feel that he's seriously. It was giving player player vibes. I told y'all that. Okay. Justice doesn't want to call any of the women because they talk to each other. And Tommy, you know, talks to this man in circles, I felt like, but really was just saying, you signed up for a process in which everyone is dating everyone. And then you have to talk to women who are talking to men, you know, that, you know, like this is what the situation is. So you not wanting to speak to the women because they talk to each other is stupid. You must not want them to compare notes on how terrible you are. I, Justice is an example of a man that I feel like is not he's not compatible with anybody because something is wrong with him. The, and I mean something like you don't need to be with anybody. Like your attitude is trash. Like what are you offering exactly? Because I'm so confused. You have a nasty attitude. You think you're God's gift. And I'm not sure exactly why. Like what are you here? You, you don't even really seem to like any of these women. Which is another reason why I don't know why we're here. You don't like any of these women. Honestly, it feels as if you're one of those men that may like to have sex with women when you can manipulate them into doing so. But you don't really like women like that. You don't want to actually engage with them like that. And the only time you engage with a woman like that is when she is thirsty because she finds you attractive. This is no disrespect, Trinika, but you are literally the, the go-between with a lot of these crazy men because you're doing the, oh my God, pick me thing. I don't know if it's genuine, but you're doing the pick me thing. And you're doing it with the big titties and the big smile and the, the soft voice. And I, I understand where they're coming from, but I don't feel that way. Like, and I don't like it because I feel like essentially it, it invalidates what the women are saying about him, even though she's attempting not to. And it's all because she is one of the main women that feel the need to coddle and baby these men. Kadeen is another one. Kadeen is another one that likes to coddle and baby, but then also likes to be confrontational her damn self. Very confusing. But that should let you know there's levels to this shit. Okay? Because she damn well knew to go and get Trinika when it was time to have a conversation with Justice because she knew that Trinika would act as some, yeah, ditzy, soft, big titty buffer. And that's not like, I'm not saying that that's who that woman is like as a whole. I'm saying that that's the way the men perceive her and she plays it up. Okay. So Justice doesn't want to call any of the women because they talk to each other. Tommy says he needs to be more open since this process is not normal for, for Justice and his normal process. Zoe is holding back. The women feel like he may not be being genuine. Let me tell y'all something. Zoe took that shit personal. So did Justice. The only person that did not take the critique so personal as to now have vendettas against the women in one way or another. Y'all are passive aggressive as fuck beyond this point. LJ was the only one that was like, okay, I'll have more, you know, deep conversations with the women that I'm really into so that they'll know I'm not just being surface level with them. I'm just a nice guy. So, and I'm sociable. So this is how I am, but it doesn't mean that I'm not actually trying to form a deep connection with someone because that's the way it felt. So Trinika Sharice, Jamala, Kadeen, Zoe, Justice, and LJ go on a bumper car ride. They go race cars. And Zoe, for some reason, felt the need to bump the women and just be very aggressive in his, his approach. Okay? He seems to be very competitive when it comes to the women. But as soon as it's time to compete with other men for the women, you're nowhere to be found. You're not being intentional. You're not being aggressive enough. But when it comes to beating the women in some juvenile game, you have all of the competition in the world. This shit is weird. It's really, really weird. And I feel like everybody acts as if these moments are small, but they say so much to me. To me, it says so much for a man to, first of all, color his beard. I told y'all, whenever these niggas are beijing in their beards and their hair to the nth degree, it's usually because they feel extremely insecure about something. And when a man is that insecure, he is going to feel 
jabbed and slighted by a woman, no matter what she does or says, he's going to find a way to blow it out of proportion because for him, it feeds into whatever his insecurity is. Because as a woman, you're never supposed to make a man feel bad in any type of way, or he's going to have a fucking conniption on you, which is what Zoe did. Now, mind you, Zoe was bumping women out the way, really hurt Trinika. Trinika said she had to sit there for a minute because she was in pain. Okay, I believe, um, I don't know if Lumi was there too. I feel like Lumi might have been there, but I, I don't remember seeing her as much. But I do feel like all of the women kind of had the same feeling about the way he was acting. And even LJ was like, you got to check your, your aggression towards the women when you're competing with them. Like, they're not men, my dude. Calm down. Like, so ultimately... Trinika and Kadeen go and talk to Justice. And he asked them if they were trying to get him sent home, which shows to me that you took it personal that you were on the bottom. And Kadeen lets him know straight up, you're difficult. She even went through the trouble of writing it out on her phone so she would be able to vocalize it to him because she realizes how hard it is to communicate with him. Because he's the type of person that is always listening for an opportunity to flip something on you or to make it seem as if what you're saying is nonsense. When he knows good and goddamn well that even the fact that he's taking this approach to the conversation is only proving your point that he's difficult because he can't even just sit and listen, digest, and then response. No, he has to argue with you every step of the way. It is exhausting. And he seems to believe that if a woman is mean to him, that means she likes him. Therefore, there's no need for him to actually listen to her complaint. There's no need for him to change anything about himself. It is huge huge lack of self-awareness and y'all yes extreme gaslighting extreme gaslighting for you to sit up here and act like you don't know that you're fucking difficult you live in a society where men are are expected to provide and protect and women are expected to be helpmates so ultimately my dude you're gonna sit up here and act like you don't know that these women expect for you to pay for a motherfucking meal it's it's preposterous and the idea that you think you can live outside of societal norms while simultaneously living up the societal norms is just rather perplexing to me. Rather, rather perplexing to me. Oh, I don't do that. I don't do this. I don't do that. But I bet you expect all of these things out of women that are our social norms. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. And Trinika. I understand what Trinika was there to do. And I have a feeling that Trinika's conversations behind the scenes with the other women are different than the conversations that she has with the men. But for her to continuously say she understands where Kadeen is coming from, but that's not how she feels. Constantly having to invalidate Kadeen in some way when all of the women have said the same thing. But she has to keep telling Justice it's not her. Almost as if she's scared of the way he may respond if he feels as if she's a part of the confrontation. Why is that? Because you, is this crazy? That's why. Anyway, oh Lord, Kadeen and Justice are going back and forth about playing phone tag. He's being difficult, even in talking about how Kadeem feels. He doesn't want to talk about other people, but this is the process. It seems there was no resolve, but then he wants to hug her. And she says no, which is another thing for me that I don't like. Why do y'all do that? Why do you have a confrontation with a woman and verbally spar with her and then physically want to um, impose yourself on her, trying to hug her in order to, I guess, show some type of resolve? No, fuck you. We're having a conversation in which you are totally invalidating and arguing with me at every single turn. And then you want me to rub my titties against your chest? Ugh, the unmitigated gall. Justice is ridiculous. Yeah, I really want to know who hurt him. Where is your mother? What did she do wrong? Like, what did your dad do wrong? Who fucked it up for you? Somebody fucked it up because he is just like, oh my God, who asked for this? Who asked for this? Return to Sunda. Okay, who told him he was a catch? Throw him back. Y'all really be out here 
with nothing but generic light skin brother good looks and think that you can just talk to people and treat women any old kind of way. And as long as there are women like Trinika that will smile and laugh as if this man is not just played in your face, I I don't I don't have any hope. I don't have any hope for society as a whole. So Kadeem, Kadeem just lets it go at the end of that, but says, No, you're not going to hug me. Okay. Um, Sharice and Zoe's conversation. This was a very explosive scene. Okay. So Sharice and Zoe talk, and she asked, Well, first of all, when they finished playing, and I forgot about this part, when they finished racing. And he kept going on and on about how he whipped their ass and it wasn't no real competition. Like he was just doing a lot. And Sharice whispers to Lumi or Trinika, one of the women, and says, barbecue his ass. Like set him on fire. Like somebody get him. Okay. And I'm sure she meant like verbally go in on him. But he was going back and, you know, he was just doing too much to me. His energy was extremely aggressive. And I think it was a turn off to all of the women. And I think that Sharice is the only one that'll say the shit. Even if she said it in a whisper, she's probably the only one that's going to actually be honest in the moment about how she's feeling versus how the other women will placate the men's emotions because they don't want to upset the men. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. It's so funny. I think that they what they've tried to do because they always make some dark complected woman seem like the bitch. Now they're doing the opposite. The only issue with with this is I don't perceive Sharice as a bitch. I think she's assertive. I think she's smart. And I think because she's at an age in her life where she knows who she is, a, a lot of the time she's not going to respond to things the way a lot of these younger women would with this almost desperation to get a man. Like, I don't, I don't see Sharice in that manner. Like, she always seems to be extremely, like, honest and say how she feels off rip. And people don't like that. But at the same time, it's her being 100%, like, honest and real. So for Zoe, who got the critique that he wasn't being genuine, to project fakeness onto her because she was simply asking if he was interested in her, why do these men get so uncomfortable when women ask if they're interested in them. It makes me feel like women should never inquire anything. Like if a man isn't putting a hundred percent pressure on a situation, you should ignore his existence entirely. That's what it makes me feel like when it comes to dating and this on this show, if I felt like a man was not making any effort, meaning like the men aren't calling and all of that, when we have these meetups, I probably will only talk to the men that had called me or I had had some interaction with. Besides that, I would act like the, the other niggas wasn't there. That would be me. But then I probably would get sent home because of that. But I don't care. But either way, like, I feel like they tried to make Cherie seem like she was like, you know, uh, the Dominica thing. Yeah. But I also feel like Mike, to me, was more disrespectful to Dominica than Sharice was. Sharice just said she was loud and she she was loud. But no, you know what? That was that part where they were all talking and she was being like extra catty about it, like trying to call Dominica a, a ghetto girl or some shit like that. But Dominica was loud. I, I just want to point that out. It's not her fault, but you know, <laughs> she was loud. Sharice does not have always the best delivery. Sometimes it's, it's really not all that, ma'am. You really could just move over. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to these men, I really don't see any issue with most of her interactions. I don't. Um, I just think that they don't like her bluntness. And as a woman that is blunt, I have experienced how I'm not even trying to offend anybody. And just my overall, like, just yes, no, you know, this, that, like, just being not, ah, uh, uh, why am I hemming and hiring? Like, what do I need to hem and high about? Like, yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Like, I'm very, like, direct with my answer. So I guess that would make somebody feel a way if they expect for a woman to she that you know indecisive or some shit like that no i'm not indecisive i'm sorry okay if you find indecisiveness feminine i don't know what to tell you okay go to hell um anyway because that's the opposite of being assertive is being indecisive so <laughs> i mean decisive is y'all know what i'm saying whatever i've been drinking away so she asked why she hasn't heard from him since their last conversation at the white party and it seemed as if they had a good conversation at the white party if y'all recall they talked and she expressed how she felt um 
that he may be, uh, well, what did she say? It was something that she was saying. Uh, no, he was talking about his previous relationship and how he gave, he proposed to the woman and gave her a ring and asked for it back the next day. And he was only proposing to her because that's what she wanted and not what he wanted, which made Sharice feel like, well, that makes me wonder if you would be honest with me all the time about how you feel. And they already felt like he was somebody that held back. So this was not a stretch, but they had a good conversation. Thus, we saw on the show, right? So she was expecting him to reach out thereafter. So she asked him about that. Now, Zoe is mad because when they were downstairs, she was like, barbecue his ass. To me, if he really felt the way, this would have been the time to ask her what she meant by that or why she said that. Or, you know what I'm saying? If you want to call somebody fake. You were honestly being passive aggressive this entire conversation and Sharice was caught off guard because she probably didn't even think the barbecue comment was that big of a deal if she thought he heard it at all. Because I remember forgetting about it by the time we got to the pool table. And then when Kadeem brought it up later on, I was like, he was mad about that? After all of the shit that happened in that conversation, she very simply asked him if he was interested and then he flipped it on her and asked her how she felt and she was like well i thought we had a good conversation at the white party i was expecting to hear from you after that and he says well i didn't think you were really taking me serious i thought maybe you were putting on and she was like i don't put on for people i'm just trying to form a connection with you and she says it just kind of seems like you're not interested and i don't want to worry about it because i have other connections you know that i could be worrying about right now this is the process i could be talking to other niggas right now i don't have to be talking to you so do you like me yes or no like that's what the conversation was and because he couldn't seem to just give her a straight answer they kind of went back and forth for a while until he said well she said he was like well that's good you should focus on your other connections and so she was like okay well do you have any other connections and he was like well i'm not here to talk about that and it's like, well, what the fuck are you here to talk about then? Like, this is y'all are really weird about not wanting to talk about the process as if y'all have never seen this show before. This is what happens. It's so weird. Um, so Sharice, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. She asked about his connections. He says he's not there to talk about that. He's trying to talk about he and her. She and you know, he was like, I'm trying to talk about you and I. So she was like, okay, so what's going on with you and I? And he was like, well, I don't really know because, you know, I feel like I didn't see a different side of you. So now I'm kind of like, ah. Eh. So now you being mean. Now you're trying to say that she's like, eh, I ain't really sure about you now. That's some mean shit to say to somebody that's trying to get to know you and trying to see if you're interested. You being a pass passive aggressive, this aggressive fucking energy while you playing pool, not really paying attention, but then having like these passive aggressive reactions to the questions that she's asking like the questions you know are fucked up or something it's just a regular conversation she's trying to have and it's the hardest thing and i feel like if you can't even have a simple conversation you gotta go you gotta go justice in in to me justice and zoe should have been sent home at the same damn time y'all have done it before okay but either way he keeps telling her to take a shot OK, because he calls her fake. He calls her fake and says that she, uh, and she says, listen, you don't want me to tell you about yourself. Do you see how you're acting? And he keeps telling her, take your shot, take your shot. And I was like, what the fuck? And then he says, you fake as fuck. He getting all loud and aggressive with her. He doesn't want to be with her. So bye. See ya. I don't want you. And she was like, and I never really wanted you. She was trying to get to know you. But essentially, when y'all first came upstairs, I feel like Sharice noticed how competitive he was and was like oh so that must mean you're going to step your game up with the way you're dating the women if you're so competitive right this is a competitive television show it's a competitive dating show and so you are supposed to be competing for the women and you're not you're not you're not calling y'all aren't trying to inquire and it makes me feel like it's because all of you men are so scared that these women are going to poor little feelings they're gonna hurt your little egos and while you're worried about them hurting your feelings and bruising your tender egos you're being extremely mean disrespectful and dismissive to the women it's amazing to me the way i gotta hear td jakes online telling women how they need to watch their delivery how they need to talk to men as if women don't already know that because these because will unalive us but you got this man and a few of these men 
completely losing their shit and being so mean to women because they don't like women having honest conversations about what they want and what they need from a man because it makes them feel attacked in some way. It's insecurity. It's, and then another thing I feel like is though you have anger issues. And that's part of the reason why the women weren't really feeling you like that because you know you have anger issues. You know that. And so you're trying to hide it, which means you're not being as expressive and as honest emotionally as you would be if you weren't trying to contain yourself because you're so insecure. And every interaction, you're probably on pins and needles wondering if the women are going to offend you. Bruise your ego. Make you feel as if you're not, you know what I'm saying? What? Oh my God, this is so exhausting. Seriously, I can't do the one live. I can't do the one live, y'all. Jesus Christ, hold up. Either way, Zoe needs to go home, y'all. Zoe needs to go home. LJ was the only one that, you know, tried to come and comfort her, okay? Um. Then on top of that, Okay, hold up. No, I don't. Mel doesn't seem to be on live right now, as far as I can see. Um, and I do not follow Marcel Hope, so I don't really, you know, care. Um, but what am I missing? What am I not seeing? Let's see. Let's go see. I don't think Marcel has uh blocked me yet. He just learned how to block people like two days ago. Um, I see. Oh, 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 oh. he posted. He posted picture. Of him and all of the kids at different times. Oh, okay, 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 okay. He's trying to show y'all he's a real father, real man. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And then he loves to be in the gym. That was four days ago, but he loves being in the gym with chains on his neck and shit. It's hilarious. Anyway, um, yeah, no, um, if y'all are talking about the stuff that happened yesterday. I'm going to get to that at the end of this video. Please do not like tell me shit is going on right now. If it's not like that totally interrupts the vibe that I'm on. I'm going to talk about it once I'm done with all of this. Um, anyway, so what, where was I? Okay. So LJ comes to talk to Sharice. Sharice starts crying. The thing that annoyed me about this is that I felt like even though Kadeem was there for the situation and needed backup with talking to justice because of how these men are, she still went and kind of talked to Zoe as if, as if his version of the story was going to be more valid than Sharice's. And I don't think I saw any tears, but I also felt like Sharice being like emotional was real to me. I felt like her being emotional and crying was real because if a man had screamed and yelled at me like that out of nervousness, I probably would have like responded the same way. I probably would have cried or teared up or something out of anger or something like that. Okay. Um, but I just felt like they made it seem as if her reaction was fake. And I wondered if they made it seem like her reaction was fake because they view her so close to being a white woman. So it was like, oh, here she go with her white woman tears again. I feel like that's how they felt about her interaction with Mike. They're not saying it, but I pay attention to, to the little bitty things that people say. And Kadeen said, like, this is the second time that Kadeen, to me, has handled Sharice as if she is being, you know, with her white woman tears, like crying for no reason. When in all actuality, these men have been extremely rude condescending and disrespectful okay and at some point aggressive with the women just out of dislike for the women not like tiptoeing around them Sharice doesn't tiptoe around any of these men verbally and I think that's what the men expect and that's what the men want they want women to be tiptoeing around them in these conversations you want her to not be herself so that you can feel like a big man and it's foolishness Utterly foolishness, okay? Anyway, so after they got into it, he left and never came back. 
Shakira meets with Tommy because she wants to cry to Tommy about how she feels away. And this was another thing that was annoying to me because I was like, Shakira, you came on a reality show and told your story to all of the women and to a couple of the men on camera. I believe you absolutely told your story to Randall. If like you told it to more than one man, I'm sure. And then you told it to all of the women in the women's lounge. And then you went and cried about it as if. Kadeen really was out here telling your story and you didn't already put your story out there. It was ridiculous to me. And then I feel like you going to Tommy to cry as if you were expecting him to go and punish Kadeen. I don't know. Something about that irked my spirit too. Because I was just kind of like, you're a grown ass woman. You're a grown ass woman. Why are you going to cry to Tommy about your issue with Kadeen? You're an adult. If you have an issue with something Kadeem said, have a conversation with her. And if you don't want your information disseminated, please keep it to yourself. Yes, no. She she is very much uh, living in her victimhood. Okay? And that's like no, no shade to her because I feel like it's something naturally that will happen to someone that's been victimized. For them to view everybody's uncomfortable interactions as some type of attack. But for you to then go and, you know, try to get Tommy to buck for you in some respect, it was just like, ew. To me, it was kind of like, ew. I didn't like it. Um, so moving on from there. And then I also feel, I often feel like Tommy is never moved by these attempts. So it makes you look even dumber. But yeah, so Brandy, Mike, Lumi, and Samson go on a double date. And Mike and Brandy might as well just leave together. Are they talking to anybody else? They might as well leave together. They was on the picnic making out and shit. I was scared he was going to sweat the Beijing on his shirt. But it was cute. Lumi and Samson had a good time as well. LJ and Trinika go on a date. And this was really cute for me because I, I feel like we really got to see more of LJ. So he did exactly what he said he was going to do, which was open up more. He talked about his daughter and Trinika loves kids. Of course, Trinika loves kids. I mean, you could basically say anything to Trinika and she's going to she's gonna be accepting. Like, she's going to like you. It, do, it doesn't matter what you say. I told my husband, I said, you can sweet talk Trinika's big toe. And she's going to be like, oh, my God, he just had the most amazing conversation with my big toe. I love it. Okay, we have a connection I've never felt before. So, yeah, I, I was just kind of like, you know, I can't ever tell if their connection is real or not, because I feel like Shanika acts the same no matter what. Um, but I do like LJ. I'm not going to lie. I do like him. I still feel like he's probably more of a ladies man than he wants to admit. But I do appreciate him not being combative and seeing the women's um, critique as more of a challenge versus seeing it as an attack that he needed to be defensive against. Thank you, LJ. We appreciate you. Also, LJ, LJ looks really good in a confessional. He had like on a navy blue suit or something like that in a confessional. I was like, damn, nigga, you giving Marcus Graham right now. Okay. So <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all. <laughs> that lady is, is not easy to, you know, it's not hard to embrace. At least not on this show, bro. So ladies lounge, right? Kadeen needs to be checked about sharing info from inside their meetings, but she keeps it, she keep, I mean, but he keeps it general. So he says it, but it's not really as if he's saying it directly to her in front of all of the women, okay? <laughs> Gold star for Marcus is definitely giving Christy from Boomerang. I am fucking dying. <laughs> I am dying right now. Oh my God. So Kadeen says, at the end of the day, we are in a process and this isn't a counseling session. And I was like, Kadeen, I agree with you, sis. I agree. But I wish that you had this type of attitude of, you know, right is, you know, right is right, wrong is wrong, cut and dry, like whatever the fuck. It's cut dry. I wish you had that attitude with the men. The way you do with the women. So the ladies talk about their dates. Lumi likes Samson, but he needs to, you know, pull back some more layers. OK, Mike was feeding Brandy grapes like they were balls and, you know, they were making everyone uncomfortable, but it's sexy to them. Kayla and Randall had a good date. They kissed and got 
Jamala says that she and Ra Ra had a deeper conversation as well. Obviously, Kayla and Jamala are in competition for Randall's affections. It's hilarious to watch them kind of do this back and forth with, yes, I had a deep conversation. No, I had a deep conversation. Ra Ra, Randall. I was just kind of like, I ain't doing all of that. Like, I just kind of feel like as a woman, I don't think there is any need to really view another woman as real competition. Because ultimately, I would hope that the man would pick or the woman would pick the person in which they are most compatible. I do understand it's like it always feels like it's some type of tug of war. But as a woman, like I just always imagine Claire Huxtable. And I feel like, you know, I'm not I'm not doing all that. We had a good time. It was really nice. I feel like I'm getting annoyed. But I'm not about to do this. You know, this back and forth, you know, passive aggressive competition with another woman, because I feel like it's not supposed to be about whether she's better than me or I'm better than her. It's supposed to be about who do you feel the most for? And sometimes that has nothing to do with who the best woman on paper is. It just has to do with energy and chemistry and connection. And that's just what it is. And a lot of times, most times, men know whether they like one woman more or the other. They just play games because they want to be able to go back and forth. They want to be able to treat a woman like trash at some point. And they, because they know they will. At some point, a man knows he's going to upset a woman and he's not going to want to have to deal with the consequences. So he's going to want to be able to leave and go to another woman that he can find some solace in. That's where be my peace comes from, which is bullshit because you just caused havoc somewhere and then left it and went somewhere else asking for peace as if you're not causing the havoc. You're, you're only going to cause havoc in that space eventually as well. Okay. So, yeah, I, I just look at, you know, the competition thing that they're doing. Like, y'all really don't need to do that. And y'all really shouldn't. Because you can, you know, what is this nan nanny boo boo shit with another woman over a nigga that may turn out to be ain't shit? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, Kadeem is really feeling Swayze. We didn't get to see a lot of Swayze this episode. But I would like to see more of their interactions. Kadeem says LJ and her talk on the phone a lot, but in person, he doesn't seem to like, you know, really interact with her a lot. I like the fact that LJ is one of the only men that really talks to all of the women. He really gets on the phone and, you know, inquires and sees how they are. Oops, excuse me, y'all. It's damn Moet. Excuse me. But I appreciate his energy nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? So... Trinika also really likes LJ and feels like he's very intentional with her. Jamala says LJ is the MVP this episode. He checks in with all the women. He really upped his, you know, his profile this week. Justice is where it falls, okay? Um, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to hear about how you refuse to pay for a date. It's it's giving poor. It's giving trash. It's giving go away then. Um, Lumi says Zoe. Then Sharice brings up the situation that happened with Zoe. And Kadeen then takes this very, like, annoyed, you know, and which bothers me because I feel like I just really don't like women that take the man's side, even though they recognize that the man is on bullshit. And for Kadeen to say that Sharice said she was going to barbecue him after the race, and, you know, like woman to woman, you can't instigate a fight with a man and then play victim. I was like, is that what she did when that man was was calling her fake as fuck and screaming at her in her face? Is that what she was doing when he was walking forward and telling her that, you know, he don't want to be bothered with her. He don't want to talk about this, like all of that aggressive energy he had towards her, her saying barbecue him that instigated all of that. Really? Is that how you feel? That's upsetting. That's really upsetting to me that as a woman, Kadeem would feel like Zoe's response was appropriate, whether it was because of the barbecue barbecue comment or not. Like, did anything happen to you, sir? I don't know. But I feel like that lady felt verbally assaulted after she left that place. I would have felt that way if I was her. You know, I don't like you, you guys, uh, girls type of bitches. Even when I was growing up, y'all, I used to view myself as a guy's girl because my best friend was a guy. Like from what? Oh, me and Jared were like, what, 13? 
Yeah. Probably from maybe 12, 13 to college, my best friend was, was a guy that lived a house down for me. We grew up in the same neighborhood. He was my best friend. Okay. That entire time I saw myself as a girl's guy, but never once. Okay. Did I feel like those dudes could say any old thing to me or disrespect a woman around me? And I wouldn't say, now, you know, you sound crazy, right? You know, you sound fucked up right now, right? <laughs> okay. That's why it took, it took a, a truly strong and, um, you know, upstanding person to be friends with me because I'm not going to not check you, especially when you're a dude, because y'all be around so many people that never tell y'all when y'all wrong. I wasn't going to be friends with no dude and he was going to walk around treating women like shit. And then I was going to be like, yeah, he's my best friend. No, the fuck out. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. So I just kind of feel like Kadeen is making a fool of herself. In the way she is responding to this situation because you weren't even there yet you had energy like whatever he did was you know okay i don't like that i don't like that at all so trinika talks to justice about the women not understanding his language she understands his language though and you know he only talks about himself and then when he gets on the phone with the women the situation kind of gets worse and now the women are feeling repulsed but she's not feeling that way i said it's so funny how you could verbalize that and then at the same time say you don't feel that way sounds like you absolutely feel that way but you don't want him to know that you feel that way and women do that a lot Women will be unhappy with the man. They will be upset at him and they will not always bitch a fit. They will sometimes act as if nothing is wrong. More often than not, they'll smile, they'll swallow it, they'll go drink, they'll hop on his dick, whatever. But they'll do something to distract themselves from the fact that they're feeling away. They do it all the time. So I, I just feel like Trinika is more so like coddling and placating than showing genuine emotion sometimes. And then I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like it's a defense mechanism that probably protects her in life. But ultimately, I don't like the energy of it. It just feels like, you know, it's a lie. Um, and I think it's 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 not good for women, for there to be women who act as if disrespect is OK, because it makes the men go around disrespecting everybody. But if all of the women are saying, nigga, you ain't shit. Like, no, but I mean, like, seriously, if, if, even if the nicest girl is like, oh, wow, you know, you really hurt my feelings a lot when we have conversations. I don't even know how to explain it. But like, I feel like you talk to me really, really badly. Like, there's a way to explain these things to men because men will jump defensive and then you'll be like, I mean, I'm just telling you how I feel. Like, even right now, you're getting upset and it's kind of making me feel the way. Like, I'm just expressing to you how I feel. Do you want me to not say anything? Do you want me to just be quiet? Will that make you more comfortable if I just don't say anything? And most times, they won't say that. Most times, they won't say, yeah, just don't say anything. And then it's like, well, if you want me to not say anything, then I guess we might as well not talk because then I'm not expressing myself. So I don't know what you want me to do if I can't be myself. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, there's a way to calmly have conversations with men without antagonizing them, for sure. But it doesn't always have to be a lie to make them feel better. See what I'm saying? And, and people act like they don't understand that there's a difference. They think you always have to go along with some bullshit so these men won't be mad. When really, there's a way to communicate how you feel. There is. And they think they can either accept it or not, but you need to be ready for the fact that, okay, well, this is how I feel. So you can either accept it or not. And if you're not accepting how I feel, and that, that means you don't care how I feel. So we don't have anything to talk about. But a lot of women won't have that attitude. They'll kind of low-key want whatever their reaction is to force the man to do what they want them to do. And I just kind of feel like don't waste your time. Um, when Trinika said she had a spiritual connection with, with justice, I said, girl, you alive from the pits of hell. But either way, she says that, she, you know, he's going to stay. Zoe would have gotten sent home if he showed up for the date, but he never showed up to meet Brandy. And it was so funny because I feel like they picked the two women that were the most, um, you know, the softest, I'm going to say, or really like, you know, the, the, the biggest of the women that you could sway with Brandy and uh, Brandy and Trinika were like the easiest of the women to get along with because they're just going <laughs> to, even 
at the end of the day, if Trinika paid for the date she and Justice went on, I'm hoping that on paid for it. But either way, she says, well, next time you can pay since I paid this time. That was kind of what the insertion was, the assertion that she said was like, you can pay next time. And he was like, next time we're going to be in my house where I don't have to pay for everything, where, you know, where it's free. We go to my house where it's free. And I'm like, so did you not, are you not going to like make her anything to eat? What are you going to tell her to pay for her own food and have it sent over to your house? So, so y'all can sit in your apartment and talk over DoorDash that she's paid for. So I feel like that's relationship shit. Like, I'm not coming to your fucking house. What? Did he not have to pay for groceries? Like, nothing is free, Justice. But it seems as if the... And this is something that I feel like most men really feel this way. They really don't want to do anything extra for women. Not really. Most men want to do for themselves and then they want to fit the woman into their lives and then make the woman feel like what they do for themselves is a sacrifice for the woman. So then they make her feel like I'm doing all of this. I'm paying this. I'm paying that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And it's kind of like, well, nigga, you was going to do that anyway. What you talking about? What was you going to be like living under the bridge if I wasn't here? <laughs> you weren't going to have a place to stay? You won't go have a job if I wasn't here. Fuck out of here. I feel like both of them should have went home at the same time. Period. Point to the fucking blank. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. All right. Hold up. Let me see if I can load my. Hold up. Because we about to talk about Bell Collective. Because Bell Collective is another show that I just be like, bro, what is going on? Okay. Hold up, y'all. Give me a second. This right here, girl, is an ad. I'm going to need you to get you some of this Just Move Energy Supplement so you can have the energy to get your workouts done like I need to get mine done, girl. It is sometimes a struggle and you need a little extra, plus the protein shakes. I don't have an appetite a lot of the time. Protein shakes really help me after the workout because I do not want to be on the massage table with my stomach growling because that's where I'm going after this, okay? So I get my protein shake done before, boom, I got both of them, I'm ready. Okay, I'm getting old. My knees is a problem. Do you see me warming it up? Do you see me trying to stretch it out? That's 35 pounds. I'm squatting 35 pounds. I'm proud. You can get those gloves and other workout gear from TeamLachey.com. The link is down below in the description box, girl. Yes. <laughs> girl, I have to give it to myself. <laughs> you look good, girl. You look good. Juvie. I just had to put him in here because he's cute. I'm on my way to the spa, girl. Peace of serenity. My homegirl does not want to be seen, but she does the best massages. I go to her at least once a week for this muscle situation, girl. And she also gave me this massage cream with CBD in it that really helps with my aches and my pain. So get you some. All of this. All of this. Get you some 15% off with my Relax Me Bondi code. Okay, girl, get it. All right, new commercials, new commercials, new commercials. All right, hold up, y'all. Hold up. I need to put this link in here for y'all. Hold up, because I thought I did, but I did not. Y'all, Bell Collective. Bell Collective, Bell Collective, Bell Collective. Okay. Um, I mean, is anything happening though in Bell Collective is my question. Because sometimes I feel like I'm watching and I don't feel like anything is really happening. But you know what? It's enough for us to talk about. Hold up, y'all. I just need to find this email right quick because I need this link for y'all. Come on, Shawmarain, is what it's giving. Come on, Shawmarain. Hold up, hold up. Did I save it? I thought I saved it. I did not. Y'all pray for me, okay? Be so much going on. I need help. <laughs> I need help. Okay. Hold up. 
because it's probably on my phone, girl. Let me see if I'm on my phone. But yes, I hope y'all like the new commercial. Make sure y'all like the video, please. Please make sure y'all liking the video. Do that for me. This is what I want y'all to do for me. So you get 15% off, okay, for that massage oil. And it really does work, y'all. Just want to let y'all know that. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Now put that website. What is the website? Okay, okay. All right, so <clears throat> Bell Collective, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into Bell Collective. All right, so Tisha takes Marie to get a vagina thing. And I don't think I have ever seen Marie smile so bright in my life. Okay, I don't think that Marie has ever looked so happy in her life. So when she was getting that, that steam put all up and through. Okay. So that was real hilarious to me. So watch her have such a, you know, a, oh my God, you know, moment. So the steam being all up and through. Okay. So, um, it, it, it was a good time had by y'all. It really, really was. Um, She's having a rebirth party. I was just like, what the f is a is a rebirth party, girl? Um, but you know what? I'm not even gonna worry myself about it. Glenn is trying to get her back, girl. Okay. She said, You fooled me. You fooled her 17 times. Okay, but you won't fool her again. I know that's right. You won't fool me a 18th time. I said, Yes, he will, because he's gonna be on a trailer, ain't he? He's gonna be on a trailer, ain't he? If he's going to be on a trailer, then I, I just kind of feel like, yeah, yeah, he is. He going to fool you again, girl. <laughs> that's what it's feeling like to me. But, you know, you can go ahead and lie to yourself if that's what you want to do, girl. I'm going to let you do it. So um, Marie says that she's celibate and she's sticking to it. I said, oh, is that what you're saying? Oh, you celibate, Marie? Okay, girl. I mean... I don't believe her, but you know, I mean, she may be sickly. Okay. That, that, that may be what it is because she a little sickly. Um, but I just don't believe her. <laughs> okay. I just, I just don't, I just don't. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 15, 14. Y'all know I'm doing multiple things at the same time. Cause that's what I do. Um, um, relax me. Okay, boom. All right, so it should not be in like the description box and shit for the, for the next couple of videos. All right, all right, all right. So Marie says she loves Cedric, but he's a serial cheater. The infidelity is what ruined them. I feel like that's bullshit. I, I kind of don't feel like it was ever really like that with uh, Cedric, but okay. Um, I'm going to tell y'all know I don't feel like Cedric is... Girl, I'm going to let it go. In her presence, he treats her like a queen, but behind her back, he's having sex with prostitutes all over the country. Cowgirls. I said not cowgirls. Tambra and Damon go to talk to her parents about her fertility options. Her mama just wants her to make sure they're married first. And they discuss how her grandmother really wanted that for her before she passed away. Damon has been in Tamra's life for a long time, so he knows her family. And there was an energy like, if you're not going to marry her, please leave my daughter alone. But I just kind of feel like at first I was looking at Letitia like, Letitia, why you keep questioning whether Tambra is being real or not? But honestly, it's more so, um, put it in my Discord. We'll talk about it after this. It's more so about, about the fact that to me, fuck, not even fuck me up. Oh, what was I saying? Uh... I don't remember what I was saying. Shit. Um, 
they discuss how her grandmama. I'll come back to it. Okay, so yeah, Tamara in the mind. He grew up with her. The family know him. They want her to be married before they have this kid. Oh, Letitia feeling like it's bullshit. I feel like it's bullshit too because essentially I feel like there's too much him and in hind. You know you're running out of time. You either want to have a baby or you don't want to have a baby. The mind he doesn't want to be married to you it almost feels as if the mind um only wants to consider marriage if you have the baby first which makes me feel like he doesn't even really want to be with you but he knows you want to have a child the energy doesn't seem to be reciprocated Tamara is about to get on the defensive and embarrass herself on the mind's behalf saying for sure that she knows he doesn't have a connection with this woman or that woman and i'm like come on Tamara, you know you can't trust the mind that's why y'all aren't married now it's not because y'all just broke up it's probably also because the mind is a hoe um and i'm not saying it because you know i know it to be a fact i'm just really making conjecture but that's the energy i get off of him like he may be saving marriage and that type of commitment and the main girl you know flag for you because you're someone who he can benefit from financially at one point or another you being on the radio mean you have clout so he may want to put you in that position because of what you have while simultaneously having sex with every other average looking bitch he can come into contact with so yeah i would be careful i would be careful about fucking around and being serious with demand because it doesn't feel like it's being reciprocated thank you though marie and essie talk about cedric and her going to a location for a methadone clinic apparently cedric called her out of nowhere and was like oh i think i found a new clinic since she wants to open up five new methadone clinics <clears throat> and essie was like excuse me excuse me See, no, I don't want I don't want Cedric involved with none of the business. OK, he needs to stay over there. Marie says that they are trying to reconcile for their family. Essie speaks of recon reconciling with Latrice. Well, since you want make up with, you know, a nigga who ain't shit, why don't you make up with Latrice? OK, because she did take some responsibility for bringing out that mess. OK, so Essie says she invited her to the rebirth party and. Marie didn't know how to feel about it, but at this point, she don't want to argue with you hoes no more because we're going to move on to making somebody else the bad guy. So we can go ahead and let this beef between Marie and Latrice go for now. Tambra meets with Akeisha. Akeisha seems to be feeling away because nobody showed up to her baby's birthday party. None of the girls came. And I just kind of feel like you really shouldn't have felt away because don't none of those women have young children. None of them have young children, y'all. Marie has grandchildren, but they don't have any young children, at least not Akeisha's son's age, except for Letitia. Her son is young, but Letitia don't really fuck with her like that. So why would she go to the birthday party? Tisha was asking um, Akeisha about Demond because of her homegirl, Taisha, who says that she's been fucking with Demond all these years. So Letitia was being messy when she was having that conversation with Akeisha. So now Akeisha is bringing that info back to Tambra. Like she was asking me all these questions, trying to get tea from me, girl. I don't know what that was about. So now Akeisha is being messy too. Let you know that Letitia ain't really your friend because she around here asking questions about your man. And Tambra is like, <laughs> girl, no. Okay, girl, no. That would not. He is not. Oh my God, no. Okay, I looked through his phone. I didn't see anything like that. It's not like that. And I was on the phone with her and she never said anything about that. So I was just kind of like, <laughs> oh my God. Okay, girl. It, it was a mess. Okay. So the rebirthday party was decorated very party city style. It was not giving match at all. It was all over the place. It was black and gold. It was a saint's party. It was like a backdrop on a little board that she got down to the, you know, the office depot. I don't know what was going on, but it was given who did this. It's close, but not good enough. So Gucci said that the rebirth party needed to be redone. Okay. She says, Marie comes in and she says, this rebirth party is because everything that tried to destroy Marie Monroe has failed. And I just kind of feel like, girl, is it, a, is it a gangster film? Like, what are we living in right now? Like, I don't know. Some reason, I just feel like she thinks that people are trying to destroy her as if people are seeing her as a threat. And she needs to, you know, um, always be on her P's and Q's because she's that girl. So people are like, you're really self-obsessed. Like, you're forgetting the fact everybody ain't coming for you, bitch. You picked a man that you could not trust. 
you bring more trouble on yourself when you continuously take responsibility for your grown son's mistakes. Your mama, who still has a drug problem that you are now bringing into your home, adding more stress onto you, adding more businesses on top of that, your sickness. Like, to me, a lot of the times you add these things. Like, you already have the sickness. You already have a lot going on with your businesses. But you to make yourself out to be a martyr, Marie. And it's kind of like obnoxious to me that you think everybody's always coming after you when the shit will treat you started. Everybody was coming for you. No, but you was being messy and confrontational and you got that shit right back. And now all of a sudden you the victim that's finally made it over and all of your enemies that tried to, you know, form weapons against you didn't prosper. Like I just, I cannot, like I cannot with the delusions of grandeur, basically, okay? So Marie walks into the party with her mom. Yo, the mama look loaded. Sitting up there talking about she need that methadone clinic. I'm like, ma'am, we're aware. Marie says sometimes you have to forgive to keep going. I almost feel like she brought her mama there to show. See, look what else I do. Look how else I sacrifice for the people I love. Okay. Then she says she's soaring like an eagle. She's not coming down to where the pigeons are. And then production being messy as fuck. Here come Latrice and Melanie. And honestly, the way Marie hugged her and said she was beautiful and Latrice, you know, it was just a warm acceptance. And to me, I was like, oh, thank God. You know what I'm saying? Marie, this wig is terrible. But oh, my God, thank God. You know, I'm tired of y'all arguing. I'm tired of you hating on that lady. You know, Latrice is happy that she was received warmly. Tisha says, oh, my God, am I dead? Like, she didn't know what the hell was going on. And then Cedric walks in. And Marie takes another opportunity to grandstand. And this is what this party is for. But the way it's set up is obnoxious to me. I'm sorry. It's just way too desperate to prove a point. Um, now she's talking about how, let me tell you something about Cedric, okay? Because Cedric cheated on me. His infidelity almost ruined me. Okay, because y'all know I be sickly and I be tired and I be laying down and my body be hurting and I can't do nothing. And then Cedric called me and I'm like, what is he calling me for? I don't have time for this negativity. And then he tells me about a medication that has saved my life. Y'all, Cedric saved my life. And, you know, I could not hear him. I would not let him speak before, but I had to. And he has saved my life. I'm like, oh, okay. Girl, I was so Gucci the entire time. Like, so Gucci was like, oh, so now Cedric didn't call you with a with a magic pill that it fixed all your ailments and shit. Now, I'm sure it makes sense on some scale, but it was basically like, y'all, look how I was able to forgive this cheating, no good ass nigga. And he came and saved me. Y'all got to forgive y'all cheating ain't shit niggas because they might call you one day and save you too. Like, that's the message. You got Latrice. Um, I'm sorry. You have uh, Leticia over there crying about Glenn. Girl, stop. Marie says, let me tell you how God works. Okay. <laughs> Go to hell, girl. So Gucci says, so I guess he's Jesus now. I say, yes. So Gucci, you get it. You get it. You get it. Okay. She gets it. Yes. Yes, he's like Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, she do look like one of the queen pins from BET Plus. That's too funny. So then he starts singing happy birthday. And it was a little struggle, but it was all right. And Marie was sitting up there smiling like a Cheshire cat. And I say, that's all it takes, huh? For an old country ass nigga that then, then gave his dick to all the prostitutes in the world to show up and sing happy birthday to you after putting you into contact with one person to give you a pill. And you couldn't ask the doctor about that. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Essie said, yeah, all of this is nice, but I need his toxic ass to go on somewhere. And I was just like, thank you for this. Thank you so much, Essie. Okay. Um, he wishes her a happy birthday. And he go, you know, he go ahead and go hold on about himself. Okay. Go ahead and go back to his holes or whatever else he be doing. All right. So Tambra talks about not going to Akisha's baby's party. And basically all of the women say they didn't like her attitude. She, you know, act like she above everybody. And Letitia says, and she calling people ugly. And it's like, oh, uh -uh, girl, who she called ugly. And basically Tambra was the one that disseminated that information that, um, you know, that Akisha had said some of the women was ugly. Girl, it was weird. And so then Letitia and Tambra have a conversation. And I felt like the conversation was hella fucking messy. Because I feel like, Letitia, you don't really have a right to question that lady about whether she's being honest about her situation with Demond. Like, what was the insinuation exactly? I need to understand. 
What was the insinuation behind? I don't know if I believe if Tamara is telling me the truth. Tamara says she wants to have a baby. She wants to be married. Tamara doesn't believe anything you said about Taisha because she's seen the text messages between he and Taisha when they got into it. And she didn't see anything about it that looked inappropriate. Taisha is supposed to be a damn decorator. OK, and they were friends, but she didn't see anything that was inappropriate. I said, girl, you mean to tell me you don't think he could have deleted it? and showed you the cleaned up version that wasn't you know that was lacking in his responses and the comments that she probably made about issues with business because y'all know how these niggas do a lot of them will have sexual relationships with women just so that they can turn around and use them in a financial capacity so yeah i don't trust them i mean i don't trust them at all but tambra you know tambra was like no okay are you gonna support me Letitia, you know, and of course, what else she going to do but go ahead and go along with it. But Letitia, let me read you down for a second, honey. It's a lot of projection going on. Just because Glenn is, is treating you like shit don't mean you get to go around digging up everybody else's shit trying to make it a part of yours. Okay? It was the energy behind the way you questioned her. It was the way you were trying to find a lie in what she was saying when at the end of the day, we are questioning your story right now. You gonna act like you didn't know about Glenn's baby? You said that he he fooled you 17 times. So how many times have you had cheating issues in your relationship? Text messages, him not coming home at night, not answering phone calls, going missing, finding condoms. Like how many different instances have you had over the years? Because it's really annoying for me the way you are going through the same fucking thing, but want to go to, to uh, Tamra like you saving her from something. Girl, what? Worry about wherever the hell Glenn is and whatever he's doing when he's not begging you to come back to the house. Because he's in the intro. Damon and Tamra go to her grandmama's house because it's about to be sold and she's, you know, sad and they cry and they talk about how, you know, grandma used to always be cooking when they would come over there and all of this. And Tamra says that, you know, after having that conversation with her father, she thinks that she should hold off on having the IUI. Um, you know, because she wants to be married and until he is ready for that, they don't need to rush into putting her body through that process if he's not going to marry her beforehand. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like essentially Tamra is waiting on Demond to marry her. And I don't think Demond has any plans on marrying her. I think that he is going to, um, you know, he's going to str string her along. I think as he's done for years now on and off. But either way, girl, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Make sure y'all like the video so we can go ahead and get into all of this foolishness that happened with uh, Mel and Martel, y'all. So y'all like the video. And I'm going to play this ad one more time because vocally, I need a break. Thank you. This right here, girl, is an ad. I'm going to need you to get you some of this Just Move Energy Supplement so you can have the energy to get your workouts done like I need to get mine done, girl. It is sometimes a struggle and you need a little extra, plus the protein shakes. I don't have an appetite a lot of the time. Protein shakes really help me after the workout because I do not want to be on the massage table with my stomach growling because that's where I'm going after this, okay? So I get my protein shake done before, boom, I got both of them. I'm ready. Okay, I'm getting old. My knees is a problem. Do you see me warming it up? Do you see me trying to stretch it out? That's 35 pounds. I'm squatting 35 pounds. I'm proud. You can get those gloves and other workout gear from SeamLachey.com. The link is down below in the description box, girl. Yes. <laughs> girl, I have to give it to myself. <laughs> you look good, girl. You look good. Juvie. I just had to put him in here because he's cute. I'm on my way to the spa, girl. Peace of serenity. My homegirl does not want to be seen, but she does the best massages. I go to her at least once a week for this muscle situation, girl. And she also gave me this massage cream with CBD in it that really helps with my aches and my pain. So get you some. All of this. All of this get you some 15% off with my relax me bondy code okay girl get it all right what all of y'all have been waiting for this entire video okay so it all started because everybody thought that Mel and Martel had went to court I don't know who said it but somebody put it out there that Mel had won in court 
And so Mel came out and said, no, that wasn't true. They had not started court yet. But Martel was supposed to have some type of evidence to prove something. And he didn't have everything that he needed. Mel had what she needed. He didn't have what he needed. OK. And so therefore, she was letting everybody know that, no, nobody has won anything. But I guess it was the, the insinuation that he didn't have the shit he was supposed to have and that, you know, he didn't have his shit in order the way he was supposed to be, you know, having his shit in order. But either way, girl, that's the issue, okay? that That's what prompted him to get on live. She didn't really say anything other than where no court hasn't even started yet. Um, we're, we're, you know, both parties are supposed to file something and he didn't file his, I filed mine, you know, whatever, whatever, okay? Y'all, I could barely make it through this live. So, you know, we're gonna go ahead and speed through some of this and I'm gonna give my commentary, you know, here and there. We're not gonna watch the whole thing because nobody has time for that. And then we're gonna go ahead and see Mel response and i'll go through whatever new shit is going on since y'all are you know in my comments like it's you know something's happening every second now even though i don't see none of it okay all right y'all let's go children and things of that nature um you know i do have to protect myself i have to protect my brand um my children things of that nature so just want to just come on and, and really just talk about i guess some of the things going on um you know with court you know, with my wine, uh, children and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good. Again, I'm about to get ready to eat some Popeyes. I ain't ate none all day. I've been hard at it today and I'm about to eat some Popeyes. I'm so hungry. What y'all eat? What y'all eat? No, it's lunchtime things like that because, you know, that a lot of times it's my passion when I'm talking about my children because um, I love my kids, you know, and then I see certain people coming at me about that. Um, you know, it's like I'm, it's like a lot of passion talking, you know. Not necessarily trying to come at certain people. It's more of um, it's like don't don't talk about that topic, you know. But it is what it is. You know, Popeyes don't sound bad. First of all, you can't tell people what to talk about, and that's what you need to understand. You can't tell people what to talk about. That's what he 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 has a really hard time understanding that you don't get to dictate what people talk about or what people say. You got on a reality show, you showed us your ass, and now people are allowed to say whatever they want to say, whether you like it or not. That's the unfortunate matter, but this is what you decided to do, okay? Y'all got on a reality show, y'all push y'all business on social media, so people are going to comment about it. That's how this works. Even if you weren't on a reality show, when you allow everybody in your business, Martel, this is what happens. Now, you would like to blame Melody, Melody for y'all business being on Front Street, but the truth of the matter is you wanted this reality show stardom just as much as she did, but you somehow thought you were going to be able to dog her out and get away with it at the same time. I, I don't know why, but either way, here we are. Yeah. I'm about to tear it up too. I'm gonna get me um a breast and wing, red beans and rice. Yeah. But listen, um, so one of the things I saw is that um Melody won the, the court um decision, whatever, you know, custody. She won custody. No, we haven't had court yet either, guys. Um, and my thing is, I'll be real, you know, I don't I've told Melody too, I don't want full custody. I don't want her to have full custody. I don't want full custody. But at the end of the day, it's like we both have to do what we're supposed to do when it comes to these children. You know? Um, like, I Isn't it funny how narcissistic men love to bring up the children when they want to shame the woman? But when it comes time for them to explain their actions that have also cause a reputable damage to the children they have nothing to say. They want to deflect. They want to project. They don't have any comments about that shit, though. Camille, like I'm the father 24 seven and I know she's the mother 24 seven, like no matter what um, the court say, we are the parents um, at the end of the day. Um, so our, we don't, I don't have um, a court date. Um, so what someone was addressing is more of my attorney, his mother had passed away or whatnot. And he had got the paperwork to me probably like 20 some days late. And so that's the, it's like more of our attorneys had to go and speak on that. It had nothing to do with me though. Um, so my paperwork's turned in, her paperwork is turned in. And I mean, we're just, you know, waiting for, waiting for court. Um, but you know, three times I tried to settle it outside of court. And like right now, you know, I'm trying to settle outside of court. And my thing is what my attorney took to her attorney is that, okay, if we're going to settle it, this is the criteria. Like we have to limit the babysitters. Um, again, guys, it's like 
20, 20, 23 plus babysitters. Okay, so let's talk about that because he says that repeatedly. Is anybody going to draw reference to Martel saying that Mar Marceau had 20 girlfriends? That seems to be the number he loves to throw out there whenever he wants to over-exaggerate something. So when he's talking about so many people watching the kids, he is blowing it out of proportion. And people are actually in the comments like, y'all acting like what he's asking for is so much, but that's not a big deal. She should send the kids over to him when she's busy. Yeah, if he were someone that she can trust, that would not use things against her, that would not try to control her, that would not try to use those moments against her in court later on so his broke ass can get child support because none of the sham businesses he's come up with have been able to finance his life the way Mel did. He also talks about in this video how he never even really looked at the money, which shows us that you were never fully responsible for the ends in the first place, which is why... You didn't have any money when it was all said and done because you've never had to actually manage the money because Mel did that. So I really want to know how you were out here getting cars for Ariane and paying for her bills and shit when you didn't even have full access to y'all money. Hilarious. You guys probably laughing like, no, that's not right. But no, that's that's accurate. That's what I gave my attorney. Um, 20 some babysitters. I think that's excessive. So. And um, I mean, if not, then I'll move on, you know. Um, but to have 20 some people watch the kids and you have not reached out to the father, boys, things like that. I don't want men watching my children. Okay. That was another thing. You don't want men watching your children, but it's okay for you to have your uncles watch the children and to insinuate. And that's what you're insinuating. I want him to stop acting like he's not saying that because Marcus and his husband are gay, that you have to be more worried about them doing something to your kids than you would if it was your uncle. Because if we really want to talk about the world, we know that that's usually not how those things happen. Usually those things happen with men who have women, who have wives, who nobody suspects would do something like that to a child or a Catholic priest. But it's very rarely grown ass married homosexual men that are doing stuff to children. Like at least in my in my life, I have not seen that nearly as much as I've seen regular men who date women taking advantage of children like that's what i've seen so when you have this conversation first of all that is so fucked up to do that to your brother-in-law that is so fucked up to do that to marcus and his husband to even insinuate or put that on them it's so messed up so disrespectful so horrible for you to even do that and you didn't have any problem with them watching the kids when you and Mel were together. But now that you're apart, you want to try to dictate whether men or women can watch the children. Y'all, that's ridiculous. It's a control tactic. It's a way to make Mel out to seem as if she's not worried about the children's safety as much as he is, which is ridiculous. Because where was he? Where was he when he was fucking on Ariane? Where was he? When, like, where were the children? They were with Mel and you weren't worrying about them when you were going and fucking on your side chick and getting her pregnant. You weren't worrying about your children's safety. So now that you and Mel aren't together anymore, don't worry about it now. You weren't worrying about it when you were just, you know, going out of town with your girlfriend to Atlanta and taking pictures and doing your little boys trips where y'all go and meet with all y'all linebacker girlfriends and shit. You weren't worrying about the safety of your children and where they were then because you trusted that Mel could take care of y'all children while you were out doing whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Correct. OK, so keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. To be real about it, I don't want no no man watch my children you know we're married you know it wasn't a problem then so i don't see why it should be a problem now it's not it's not like i've changed anything you know it's not like i changed up when it comes to a man watching my kids or me and watching my kids so i know a lot of people like it's the brother but it's times that the brother left and his husband watched my children um and and, and that's to me that's just, just unfortunate like again why to go out of town, just why is it unfortunate why if she, if I had to go out of town, I'm gonna call their mom first. Um, I'm gonna be out of town for a couple of days. Well, would you mind watching the kids? I, I do that to her now. Of course you do. You always have. You always have depended on her. She's trustworthy. You are not. Just giving her the first right, you know, and that's in court papers. And you know, I don't have anything against anybody being gay. You do. Again, for a lot of people that doesn't know the reason they're being court. So first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to you guys. We went to. Can you guys hear me good? 
Baby, don't think that I'm... Let me go back to whoever said this is lies. Ja Jazzy, listen, what are lies? <laughs> it's nothing to lie about. What do you, you mean? No, what do you it's, mean it's, it's not nothing lies. to lie about? You think I'm a liar? Get off my live. You know, it's. I'm just, I'm telling you guys what it is. The reason I have Millie in court now is because I don't want me and watching my children and that she, <clears throat> I don't want me and watching my children and that she's had over 20 some people watching my kids. I don't, I don't want that. You know, again, like I shared with Melody too. You don't have any wants at this point, Martel. You don't have any wants. That's it. I've came, I, I've talked to her. We got text messages. You know, I got stuff that my attorney sent to her attorney. Like, let's settle this. But can you please promise me that you would not have that many babysitters or that you won't allow men to watch our children? That's it. That is it. And I mean, if you can agree to that, I'm, I'm good. But she said, no, when kids are in her custody, she can do whatever she wants to do. Yes. And I mean, I, I don't I don't I agree with that, but I don't agree with that 100 percent, though, you know. Thank you. Because but again, he's if you don't have time to watch his daughter, the exactly. On your watch, just call the dad. Thank you. Or if it was me, I call making the mom. your headache. But guys, we started in court. I asked Nellie last year around November, December, if she, um, if she would not allow me to watch the kids again. Um, to watch the kids, if you filmed a scene with my, um, with my attorney talking about full custody, and then somehow, some way, Melly heard about that, and next thing you know, in December, um, my son had got like a scratch on his head. He and I, um, I was playing, we were playing around the table and stuff like that. Um, but I got onto him too, though. But he bumped his head on the table and scratched his little head. Um, and then, you know, instead of Melody giving me a call, she went straight to her attorney and and said that I, I hit my son 25 times. I, la I gave him 25 lashes and also hit him upside the head with a um, back scratcher and made him bleed or whatnot. So she had me in court for that. And she didn't even call me to ask me what happened. So for 56 days, the judge took the kids away from me for 56 days because she accused me of that. False. Okay, so let's listen to that. Listen to this. So the judge... The judge, she went to a judge and do y'all really think that they didn't investigate that before they decided that he needed to go to counseling and he needed to stay away from the children for 56 days? Why do y'all think that happened? Why would a judge tell someone that they have to stay away from their children for two months? Unless there was actual evidence that you had done something that gave the judge pause, that maybe made him feel like you needed to calm the fuck down before you could be around your children again. What's the point, Martel? Be Sleep. Besides making Mel look bad. What's the point? Excuse me. So we went to court. I won that in court. And I'm like, I hit my son 20 sometimes. Where are the marks? If you hit anybody 20 sometimes, I'm like, where are the marks? You know? And that hurt me so bad because it was 50 some, 56 days that she took my children away from me. She made me miss both my girls' birthdays. Um, she didn't didn't you miss on, them the year prior? She didn't even prior? call me on Leah's birthday. She didn't even let me. She's supposed to call you on the baby birthday. Gotcha. Sorry. She didn't even call me on Leah's birthday to, so I can tell my baby girl happy birthday, right? So for 50-some days, my kids were away from me. Um, and next thing you know, my son having behavior issues and, and things like that in school. And now they're saying that he needs some little counseling. You don't need no damn counseling. You need to be around his damn dad. You know, I'm structured. I, I'm a Did he just say that the baby don't need counseling? He need to be around his daddy? You mean the one who's volatile and won't go to therapy and get his own mind right? All of this stutter and his stammer is how you know he lies, y'all. I'm, I'm pulling up the Instagram after we finish this. But how can you feel like your children don't need therapy when you and your wife are going through a very volatile divorce right now? Y'all are divorced. You have another child by another woman. Y'all are on social media arguing every other day. And a judge had to tell you that you needed to go to therapy and stay, to, stay away from your kids for 56 days. So can you please explain to me how in your peanut ass brain you think that your children do not need therapy your children absolutely need therapy even if you weren't the piece of shit that you are kids need therapy when parents divorce i know that's not something that y'all feel like y'all should do but you should when your kids are dealing with a huge life change put them in therapy so that they can deal with their emotions so that it won't start showing up in all of these different ways as they get older. Because that's what's going to happen. So him feeling like the kids don't need counseling is a huge red flag that you don't even live in the world we're living in right now.
How do you know what's good for the kids? This one, my kids and things like that. And um, since I got them back, we ain't had no problems like that. And um, so, you know, that, that hurt a lot. So that was the first, that was like the first that we went to court is when she falsely accused me of that. She um, falsely accused you. Okay. But I mean, we, we, we there, we here. Now. He's lying. Marcus is, is her brother. It doesn't matter. Be who you are. Right. If she just said, hey, I agree with you, Martel. No me and watching kids and we can select two or three people to be full-time babysitters. Nanny. I, I feel like you're not, like the way you treat her, the way you lie on her, the way you try to make her look bad. <sighs> no. Whatever you want to call it. Like she, she doesn't owe you any of this. Go to hell. My son, she could have me in jail. When she, <laughs> I also saw somebody talk about that $17,000. Guys, Let's that talk was about crazy it. too. Because no, I did not steal seventeen thousand dollars from her. I would, I'd be in, I would have gone to jail. That is called um, contempt of court. That's what we're going through the divorce thing. If I had stole that seventeen thousand dollars, because she, oh, she definitely told the attorneys. I mean, the judge saw it and everything. No, because I wrote down that because just because we go through divorce or just because we're divorced, or whatever, that doesn't mean that the money that we once shared is now just yours. No, we got things to pay, and your money is included. Okay. So I wrote everything. I don't like the energy of what he said just then. Um, actually, what it sounds like to me is that they got paid thirty four thousand dollars or something like that, and they were supposed to split it, and he took all of it. Down to my gave to my attorney, and and actually at the time I had a female attorney, and she said, "Martell, you can go to jail." I'm like, "I didn't. This is my money. <laughs> this is not male's money." She convinced my attorney, and my attorney, Martell, you gonna go to jail. And I told my attorney just like this. <laughs> I said, I no longer want you to represent me. I, I said that um, I no longer want you to represent me because it just seemed like you don't understand what I'm saying. I said that the the, the, doc, the list that I gave you um, are the things that I had to take care of with our money. The seven, her seven, it was like thirty some thousand dollars that just came in. But it's so funny because I'll tell you the whole story. Forget it. So the whole story was lying. I was going through my little situation. And Melody, she had a, another account. Melody went into the account. Um, I think we got paid by um, own paid us. She went in. No, no, this was my extra money. So she went in, took all that money out. She was down south, and that's when I went live too, talking about um, talking about my children that I ain't seen my kids in like uh, twelve days. So hold on one second. Stay strong, King. I hate y'all. <laughs> in the comments, and I, I was down south. And so she went into the account. She took all the money I, I joined the account and put in her personal account. And I'm like, and she wasn't talking to me though at that time. So she was not even talking to me at all. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she didn't took all the money out of the account. Mind you, I ain't have a dollar. I'm like, oh, hell no. What I'm gonna do? So that means you didn't have your own separate account like she had hers? That doesn't make sense, Martel. So she had a separate account, y'all had a joint account, and you didn't have an account at all. So she went down south and took money out of the account and put it in her personal account, and now you don't have any money. So that sounds like, to me, you was depending on her for all your money. So how are you the primary parent and the primary breadwinner? Talk to us. I was like, okay. So this, and then next thing you know, and then it's so funny because, like, um, I'll say my cousin friend, she told me, um, she told me the whole situation um, after the fact. Like, yeah, I, they, they were together at that time um, when Melody was taking that money out and stuff like that. So a week passed by, and Melody took that money, um, had some more money come in, and Mel took that money out again. And, and this time I, I told her, I was like, Mel, like, you know, I got no, why are you taking this money out the account? You need to put it back. She said, nope. And I'm like, damn. So from what I understand, what he's talking about is that they were paid together from the show. That's from what, what I understand. So she took, like, she took some of the money out of the account because it was her money. Like, I'm confused. What is he talking? What is he talking about? I'm over here, goddamn, struggling, and Melon took all this money out the account. But no, I mean, that's what you call stealing money out the account, right? But it was a joint account, and I ain't, you know. And at the time, I didn't, I never really looked at our accounts anything like that over here. She knows that. I said, oh, oh, God, what you gonna do? Girl, hey, look, don't y'all know, like um, about a week later, that's when that $34,000 came in. 
That's what I was I saying. Said, it was oh, her money. Shit of this. But it was going into <laughs> I mean, the same even account. Even though it was going to something that it was set up to us. go into before. But I still put the money. I said, oh, hell no. I said, God bless me with this. Mm-mm. So my attorney was tripping. Mel was tripping. She was about to burn the house down. So I got <laughs> I got a video of Melody tripping on me. I'm like, girl, this is my money. You know what we have to do mm. with this money. So Melody That's got light fluid, like. sprinting all on the furniture. I'm up here recording. So I got that video footage, right? And, I, and she asked for it for court too. Because she, I guess she won't uh, for me to delete it. I ain't delete shit. So, so you want to prove that she was trying to burn the house down. So you tried to do it figuratively by cheating and destroying you guys' life. And she tried to do it physically in the moment because she was probably upset with you. But where's the video? Well, she's spraying light of Florida. I tell people now that court, I mean, they you know what I'm saying? It's not social media. It's not how y'all feel about Martell and things of that nature because what y'all, the perception you guys have, it's on, on a T-show. About- how we feel about you, Martell, is not about a TV show. It's about you. A TV show. A TV show that, you know, it has to paint a narrative to draw y'all in, the audience. And what you guys see on TV is not Martell. Like, it's, it's a reason that Martell don't lose friends and Martell has, has had friends for over. Um, so, no. About how you treat people. Right, Mel's like the that. bad guy. I don't want to act like that, but it seems like you get glorified for going on social media acting because I see so many people up here talking about, oh, Melody, I wish you win custody of the ch- of the children. I wish that um Martell doesn't need those kids. Like, damn, y'all must not know how a person, how good of a father I am. No, we don't. We don't. Y'all, y'all we can't. don't see it. We don't. We don't see it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you guys, um, I don't know. Some of y'all just kind of messed up, apparently. Are we? But it's, it's all good. It seems like you're messed Again, up. I don't. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to have full custody. Whole heart. I don't. I just want us both to do what we're supposed to do when it comes to the kids. Um, no, you want to be able to control her. You want the judge to tell Mel that she has to come to you instead of choosing people who are closer to her, who she doesn't have as much of an issue with. That's what it is. I I'm over it at this point. Okay, I'm over Martell. Let's go ahead. And go to Instagram, girl. Let me, let's see. Let's go to Mel's page first. Okay, because Mel responded. Hold up, y'all. All right, y'all go ahead and use that fuck nigga free code. <laughs> That's so funny. F-N-F-R-E-E, fuck nigga free. Okay, hold up. So, yeah, Mel said, use her FNF code for 25% off in the last night. Okay, so if friends in your inner circle is sitting in front of me, smiling in my face, hold up. Can you pause it? Okay, yeah. Pause. Okay. I mean, if all the years you were in the inner circle didn't help well, because ain't no way I'm kicking it with my merry friend's side, side, nor woman. Nope. And I call the wife and the kids family, too. Nah, y'all big fake. And people be wondering why I remove myself. Who you talking about, girl? Hold up. Let me go to the beginning. I need to go to the beginning. Because this seemed new. Hold up. Yeah, no, we go because we got to go. Yeah, we got to go all the way back. Hold up. So I think, yeah, okay. All of these is not there. All of them not there. So hold up, hold up, hold up. Because I got them. Hold up, y'all. Because I know y'all sent them to me in the Discord, but I feel like the way I'm going to have to go through them is going to be harder because they not all one after another. Okay, hold up, hold up. Yeah, y'all y'all was just posting, child. Y'all was just posting for dear God. All right, and y'all, okay, okay. So I can't go, I can't look at that because that's not organized enough for me. Hold up. Okay. Damn, is it on my other phone? Ugh. Okay, fine. I'll confuse the hell out of myself and read them from the Discord all out of order. Okay. All right. So, because they're on my other phone. My other phone's downstairs. The one time I don't bring it up here. Okay. See, they all out of order. All right, I'm going to just read the ones from the blogs because I hate the fact that they're out of order. 
And I know the blogs didn't post all of them, but it's going to be good enough for now, girl. All right. So here it is. What's so crazy? Hold on. Y'all want to do it? Okay. What's so crazy is this is the same person who destroyed his family and lost it all, but still thinks somebody owes you. Yes, I sure did spray. The judge threw nothing out about 17K, shaking my head. This man is delusional, but baby, start a battle, I win the war. Man, I can count two that he's treated terrible and ain't made them a priority. We ain't covering in 2022 nor 2023. Lose friends, LOL, nah. You need, I said you need people even when they, I think that's what she meant. You need people even when they show their true colors. I walk away. There's a difference. So stop that narrative. Man, shut up. My kids are with me most of the time I have them. Somebody go get this mental case some help. For real, for real. She was watching that live and just typing away, y'all. I really have sat back and I said too much. Only when I didn't want y'all feeling like things were over with when they weren't. But I've really, really been showing a whole lot of grace. But I'm going to let God do the grace. Who was watching the kids when you was out? You know what? Never mind. Ain't this the same person who's such a great friend but blasted so much about those friends when they weren't bothering him? Oh, <clears throat> okay. The judge ordered therapy and that was back in March. You ain't did not one session shaking my damn head. Your priority ain't the kids and their well-being. Your priority is what it has been since the marriage. A hope. The same person who slipped up the last week of filming and said you saw text messages about my brother possibly having COVID and I hadn't even been around you. So my question on camera was how you see my text messages and I ain't even been around you in two years like that. And that's why I keep changing my number. Ladies, these men be out here tracking and recording. I promise I figured it out. And if you such that guy and have all these friends who just love you so much, then why the hell were you all were your utilities turned off? I know what's really up. And as my great grandmother used to say, sometimes you got to cut a snake off by the head. OK, now that was the first round. OK, now let me go back. <laughs> Child, let me let me go back. OK. So we're going to go all the way to the beginning, girl. Hold on. Let's see. We go all the way to the beginning. Girl. Okay. The babies are so cute. Okay. We here. Okay. We here, girl. All right. And talking about some numbers. Hold up. Go back, bitch. And talking about some numbers using the same method you using and calling babysitting. Which ain't it. Hell, you at 19 shaking my damn head. These miserable, bitter narcissists ain't no joke shaking my head. Girl, we know. Sat my kids down and had them give you names of anybody, family or not, who has watched them for any time. Even if I went down to the road to the store and gave peach cobbler to whoever told the most. A scoop of ice cream was for the second most. Popsicle for who told the least. And we've heard him do this type of shit before, so you know she's telling the truth. Shame. That's why I ain't settling or mediating shit about this, period. Something's missing in the head. Yes, ma'am, we know. And now I'm done for the day. It's fun time with kiddos, okay? So she went on, and then she came back. One more thing. Who finna have four kids with a bad parent? Shake my head. Exactly. Y'all ain't hear me say nothing about po nothing but positive about this man when it came to parenting. And until the divorce, it was true. But since the divorce, the veil has been removed and it's a lot that ain't okay. It's a lot of hurt and bitterness being taken out on my kids. And I see it and my kids feel it. Now keep bringing your ass to social media and I'm going to keep tearing your ass up from this day forward. Revenge porn? Really? I pay attention to promises, not threats. I have four kids some kind of way with you. Hashtag whack. Oh, so he must have said he was going to come out with some revenge porn, girl? 
She said, hashtag typical. And for the one saying, I ain't never been quiet ever. Tuh, you about to see how quiet I've actually been. Attorney on 24-7 speed dial. It's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Then more time with the kids. Fuck nigga free. Save 25% off. Okay. More, more fun times with the kids. She's adorable. Okay. Then her video. Then her. We cute. Then fuck nigga free. If friends in your circle... Oh, if friends in your inner circle is sitting in front of me, smiling in my face, eating at my table, vacationing with me while paying for car repairs. Hold up, y'all. They keep moving on me. And Valentine's Day flowers for and hanging with my then husband and one of his side chicks multiple times, then I don't need it. You think we forgot? I sure didn't. You should have sat this one out. Sit all the way down, sir, because the way the Scorpio is out right now, tuh, I want to know who she's talking about that's speaking up on his behalf. Who, sir, is speaking up? I mean, if all the years you were in the inner circle didn't help, well, because ain't no way I'm kicking it with my married friend's side, side nor woman. No, nope. and I call the wife and the kids family too? Nah, you big fake. And people be wondering why I remove myself. I think she's talking about Marcelia. Yeah. In case y'all wondering what I'm talking about, this Thanks for sending this to me, Marceau. This is what happens when your friends aren't in your inner circle. Mm. Mm. If friends in your inner circle is sit, ain't that some shit? And when I'm in these stories, I ain't taking time to proofread nada. So take it as it is. But know that I ain't graduate with a 3.97 GPA for nothing. And I had my students, not advanced class, scoring higher than the advanced students for no reason. So don't even try that one with me. Because I really can't write out every single time if I wanted to. So read and move along. This ain't about grammatically correct. That's like making sure your shoes are tied in the middle of war. Okay. Hey, sugar mama. Oh, they said they have fun, honey. Okay, yeah. Okay, we outgrow people when we outgrow a version of ourselves. Huh? Okay. All right. Okay. I said it yesterday and I'm going to say it again. Keep going to social media and I'm going to get that ass together every time, every single time, no matter the day or the week. So let's get into it. Okay, hold up. So it don't matter that it's Sunday getting in that ass. First off, quit getting all your females to type up your horrible ass posts. Everybody with the least amount of sense can tell these are female vibe posts. You accidentally even screenshotted the text in blue not too long ago, just like he did with the wine, y'all, that he said was not fucked, you know, because we said he white labeled his wine and he said everybody was lying. No. Somebody actually took a screenshot of the copy and paste description that said Sutter Homes in order for us to call it Sutter Homes. We didn't pull that out our ass. So you often get people to copy and paste for you and you don't do it right because you're slow. Hell, I remember how you used to want me to type up stuff for you all the time. And I had to tell you eventually, I ain't your secretary. Washington, D.C., Man, maybe you forgot the only person in Washington, D.C. has been you. Maybe you forgot about the dance instructor who exposed you sometime last year, sending her thousands of dollars at a time. You even posted when you were in D.C. And then she hit me up because you played her and she was upset and felt taken advantage of. I'm going to save the evidence for my event, though, because it's special. Ever notice how when men get caught up and you leave them, all of a sudden you a hoe? But just four or five weeks ago, begging me to take you back? Mel, you know we soulmates. Mm-hmm, yeah, I was on that trip, girl, we know. I told you then I meant every word. It's a hell no for me, and God bless you on your journey. I've been called a hoe for two seasons now. Where are the receipts at this point? I called you a cheater, hoe, father the child outside of the marriage and the facts are clear as day where are the lies you on the other hand one minute you on a panel talking about you ain't air my ish out like you were protecting me now you're admitting to if i had have known then before a tv deal if double-minded was a person it'd be your face right beside it. I've said it and I'll say it again. December 2017, I left your ass, got an apartment, and I was speaking with an attorney in Huntsville about divorce. 
met someone during that time, but we never had intercourse. And as far as fellatio, I understand you mad, but but, but, but I just ain't never seen a dude worried about something that ain't even his no more. I would be careful of the lies and assumptions you type online, mister, because whoo, you making this easy. I had my daughter in December 2019. I'm not even leaving the house because I have a newborn. And then there's a pandemic that hits. Everybody's scared for their lives, not knowing what this is. Well, except you. So I'm in the house, but I found the courage to go out the house and get pregnant by somebody. I understand the projection from a narcissist though, because that's exactly what you did. Yikes. Then going to drop that damn unpermitted recording to a blogger trying to make the world think that when I said 2017 that you found out in 2017, we weren't together. But I get that you think people always belong to you, wanting the world to think that you held some deep secret or some shit. Nah, we had that conversation in 2020 because you asked a question and I gave you the answer. Y'all better start doing a better job and ask for proof from these folks. Make them show you those back end dates on these pics and recordings. I've literally sat back and watched you make a whole tour of the city trying to dog and come for me and turn people against me. And I just step back and let you have them. But the real ones ain't blinded by your manipulation. And one thing about my kids, they are highly intelligent and ain't about to lie. You are exactly what I said you are. I ain't got a coach. I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't got and I ain't going to because I actually care about my karma, boo. And hell yeah, I ask people why they trust their spouses around you. One, you was just with one you was just with is giving his wife hell and now they going through a divorce. Who, who was that? Then you send in all the others pics of women from damn exotic women sites knowing they are married but smiling in their wives' faces. Don't worry, bloggers. I'm going to let y'all see it, baby. Didn't I tell y'all this going to be the event of the year? Make it the event of the century. When your friends DMing you because they over the lies too, shaking my head. Somebody said, you ain't never been nobody hoe. I remember seeing chatter online like she probably got her a side nigga too, having to shut that down quickly, okay? You're right. What they see on TV ain't the real. You the one in real, in real life is worst. And so many people have witnessed your terrible behavior. I really don't even know why you still on owns payroll. I literally had to stop filming behind every man fall 2020 been left you because you came to my set, started shit, got in the faces of people. They're working with me, push one of them all recorded and on video, shake my head with several people witnessing, shake my head. And I ain't said shit about it. I had to walk outside, cry and all, then go back in and kill and job still done. Okay. And every single thing I say, I can prove and I will prove. That's the difference. I ain't got to lie. And man, if you don't stop with this, she was messing with our attorney shit. You've been saying that for years. Prove it. Your little flirty text messages you got from going in my phone and taking a pic of it. Crazy. I don't care about that, my boy. I was done with you and I can do some over the phone flirting if I want to with who I want to. You had a whole chick pregnant at the time, mad because you can't have me. I know, baby. And for everybody asking, I promise I'm still smiling. I'm still good. I still feel amazing. God is still amazing, etc., etc. Okay, listen. <laughs> okay, she had to let y'all know today. Oh, Lord. Let me check in. We all right up in here? It's 1145 of y'all in here. Make sure y'all like the video. Don't just be sitting here stalking a bitch while I'm in here doing my Melody Hope voice to the best of my capabilities while reading shit I ain't read yet. Okay, off the cuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get into Martel's messy ass posts. Okay? So, let's pause it. We ready? Hold up. I wish Lyric was awake so he can bring me something to drink, but you know niggas be sleep so who was watching the kids when you got pregnant twice and had two who was watching the kids when you were performing what fell and fucking six seven years ago and go on a reunion and say i can't remember oh wait hold up we're performing uh fellatio okay 
who was watching the kids when you were performing fellatio and, and fucking six, seven years ago and go on the reunion and say, I can't remember who was watching the kids when you were taking the flights to DC with the same nigga, then come back to me being a pro ho. Oh, wow. We were done then. If I had known all that you did before you even struck a TV deal, then going to take my infidelity to TV for a freaking storyline? Stupid. Played me. But don't mention nothing your lowdown dirty ass did. This nigga is in, <laughs> this nigga is ill. Now you got the entire country looking at me like it was all me when you played an even bigger part. No, dude. That's what Martel seems to have a hard time understanding. People's dislike for you is about you. It's not about Mel. It's literally about them watching you mistreat her, talk to her crazy, cheat on her, and then have your weird ass side chick who's obsessed with her get online and talk all types of cash money shit about that lady. And you never said anything. You never stopped Ariane. You never, you know, said that she needed to chill out with the way she talked about Mel. And it's because you always wanted people to join in with beating Mel down, hoping that if she was so depressed and destroyed that she would come crawling back to you. And that is the exact opposite of what's happened. And you can't take it. That's what's really what's going on. And you can't convince me otherwise. Now let's continue on with the ignorant shit he said. I'm not done. Who was watching the kids when you were with our attorney? Who was watching the kids when you were sleeping with my frat? Who was watching the kids when you were sleeping with someone I knew personally, all while married? I'm a hoe because I was sleeping with one person? No, you are for having a roster. Your list runneth over. Child, that's such bullshit and you know it. Because if she was, you would have been sprayed her with your bitch ass how i found i never allowed my kids dude told us that like season what two or three that you bribe the kids with tweets but whatever i'm their father not a cop i don't play that crap my kids are kids around me if i ask a question they're gonna answer bribe belt the prior weekend, the kids shared with me how afraid they were in a hotel being babysat by two college girls because their mom was busy. That's cool. They said the fire alarm went off and they didn't know what to do. My youngest were crying, but there I asked all the questions. But Peach Cobbler sounds great. Melody Hope, keep talking. You really like putting 20 on 10. You really doing a lot, Martel. Said I was a good dad until we divorced. Being with you didn't make me a good father. Being a good father is just who I am. You didn't have time for me and the kids while we were married. Same as now. The reason for 24 babysitters. We don't owe each other anything but to be good co-parents. If our kids are with you all the time, I wouldn't have you in court for allowing over 24 people to watch them. Very scary situation. And maybe if you made money, she wouldn't have to work as hard, nigga. Are we forgetting that you didn't have any money when she left you because you're not making any money? So she has to work to take care of four children and herself? He's really just trying to get child support, y'all. Somebody let this woman know that other people have facts too. We have whole court coming up that says that you don't have time for the kids. How does that say that she doesn't have time for the kids? How? Except for pictures and videos for social media. Oh, you mean like the one you just posted? Melody, stop saying you've walked away from all these friends. They all walked away from your fake shit. That's not what we saw on the show. That's not what we saw on the show at all. In all honesty, we've seen Destiny, Tisha, and you be obsessed with Mel after she stopped fucking with y'all. Every one of them will say the same thing about you. Fake. Stop saying you were sitting back. You just went on TMZ calling me out my name, but I'm supposed to ignore? Y'all, when did that happen? I was showcasing a bb and you don't know how to react a bad bitch oh okay okay he was showcasing a bad bitch and she didn't know how to react okay you keep me in your mouth for a storyline how she was like this whole season she hasn't even really been on the show so how does she keep to me it sounds like you're now reiterating that oh my god is fucking arian writing this for you is that what she meant is arian writing this for you because that's some shit arian would say Unless it's Sheree, because no one wanted to film with you. She didn't give a shit. And then you could tell she didn't care. And then you're saying, I'm delaying our court date house way. Who am I? The dang judge? Well, if you don't have everything that's needed, they're going to delay waiting on your lawyers to get the proper paperwork in for a certain amount of time. It could also be delayed because it's COVID and there are less 
people to work and do the court job, child, whatever. I ain't got time to make sense of niggas just, just trying to be nonsensical to prove that, you know, male lying when at the end of the day, you're not trying to have an actual real conversation with anybody. You just spewing out bullshit. Tracking, you're delusional. Is she? I guess you weren't around me when I took pictures of you and our attorney, Dan Crane, text message conversation about hooking up while you were married and he was engaged while you were in our bed sleeping. I guess her phone didn't know about timing out. I bet you remember now that you were around me when I saw your brother had COVID. Okay, so you're now mixing. I'm confused. I guess her phone didn't know about timing out. Y'all, what does that mean? Because to me, you're mixing two different things. Like the lawyer shit happened, supposedly happened when she first filed for divorce in 2017. And now he's talking about her brother having COVID, which is something that happened when they were taping recently. I don't even know what he's talking about at this point. Like that don't even make sense. And honestly, I feel like you can't dog somebody out for all those years, have a baby by another girl, the other girls online stalking and talking cash money shit about your, your wife, your ex-wife. And you want us to give a fuck about her talking to other niggas? I don't care. Like, that's not going to change any of what you did, Martel. It's just not. Fellas, make sure you check names and numbers because Mel had Negroes numbers say this, her friend girl names and cousin names too also she was doing the shit you was doing and now you mad is that what you're saying y'all stop thinking i did all this crazy ish what do you mean all crazy what like you cheated you admit it like what are you talking about oh and none of this is alleged so mel if i'm lying sue me these are facts and my witness are already on board all while married crazy therapy was for me to attend with my son because you mel messed my kids up a little by keeping them away for 56 days. The judge kept you away, nigga. Okay. While falsely accusing their father of hitting my son 25 times and striking him on the head, causing him to bleed. He told you he bumped his head on the table. You didn't call me to see what happened. You were forced to drop that nonsense in court. This is the video, y'all. Okay, no, not the music. Nice couple, but is he married too? Look how lame this nigga is. So he rolled up on her and another guy and started recording. It's music. Why is he playing Lauren Hill though? How whack, how lame. Melody, who was watching our kids for an hour when you left them in the car unattended while getting your makeup done? Nobody. A lady had to bang on the place of business door to see whose kids they were over an hour. Any, any re Another reason I want full custody, I would never. I thought you said you didn't really want full custody with your lying ass. Somebody send this to Melody Hope. Happy Sunday. Melody Sheree Ho, I don't need to fly bloggers in. People that know our business and facts about us and what we've done are right here in Huntsville. So let me know the date for interviews because Mr. Ho is always prepared. And this is what he posted, um, you know, what this was last night or this morning. What, two days ago? Two days ago. Okay. He got to show y'all that he's spending time with the kids and all of that. You know, he's being a father. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So yeah, y'all, that was that was all of the back and forth, y'all. That was all of the back and forth that went down between Mel and Martel on the damn internet. Okay, hold up. Okay, hold up. Let me go back. Apparently, <laughs> there's more. Okay, hold up. Let me see. I don't know. Uh, why it's not working? Hold up, y'all. I'm going back. Okay, here we go. Um, pause. All right, hold up. There's more. Okay. Okay. Married? What? Who? This tells me that's what you've been doing. Always projecting. Shoot. I got to go all the way through it. Child, they still going back and forth. Okay, hold up. Um, 
always projecting man these lies are funny because i promise i'm gonna hold on to them five four three two one okay and then martel hold up let's go back to martel because i believe there was one more with him <laughs> they just gonna keep going back and forth in the stories i'm tired why are you coming from our soul when our mutual friends, Alanda, Judy, and Destiny, etc., know you are fucking and sucking other niggas while married to me? And I'm not mad at them. Who gonna check me, boo? Well, that's lame as fuck. Not you using a charade line against her. So is it charade writing writing the messages? Is that is that what's going on? This is just so messy and whack. <sighs> He reposted with the curse word scratched out like we don't understand the first time. Child, we grown. Why are you trying to like doctor the, the shit now? Like just say it with your chest. Oh, and So yeah, y'all. Honestly, I don't care about any of that. Like everybody keeps wanting to talk about how Mel is a cheater. Mel cheated. And I was just like, girl, don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. Y'all are not together anymore. Nobody cares. You cheated. I don't think she cheated on you the way you're trying to make it seem. But even if she did, nobody cares. Nobody cares. The biggest issue here is you want to control her because you're mad that she doesn't want to be with you anymore. So now you're trying to control who around the children because that's what narcissistic niggas do when they can't control the woman anymore they use the children in order to control the woman or always know her whereabouts and things of this nature how are you going to act like you weren't tracking her but it seems as if you rolled up on her when she was with someone seems as if you rolled up on her when she was with somebody so how can you say you're not stalking her how let's see there was another one. Okay. And yet again, has anyone asked yet why there's all this smoke for me? Yes. We want to know, Mel. Why? Why? I, I, I asked the question. I asked, what the hell is going on? Why is he this mad? All because all you said was the court, um, the court date had not started yet. Okay. She says, and yet again, has anyone asked yet? Why there's all this smoke for me, but none for Ariane, I'm sure. Because, woo, it's been so much said from that end that's just explicit as all get out. And all I heard was crickets. If this ain't misery, child, hmm, it's ridiculous. It's really like real deal ridiculous. I don't even know what to do, okay? I don't even know what to do, child. Let me see. I, I almost feel like I don't even want to get off the internet just in case something else transpires. Lord have mercy. Okay. Uh, did you see what the neighborhood talk posted? Thank you, Cindy. No, I did not. I did not see what the neighborhood talk posted. Uh, let me see. Oh, wait, no, that's not the right one. Child, they be having way too many neighborhood talk instagram pages so sometimes girl let me see because i don't see the site and neighborhood talk the only one that posted it Dum, 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 dum. all right hold up y'all i'm pulling it up right now okay um oh okay yeah no i just read through all of this so if you're talking about what the neighborhood talk posted i just read through all of that <laughs> oh my god um so yeah shay room posted I mean, y'all, I don't know what they can be posting that I haven't already talked about, considering the fact that I just sat here and read y'all all of the stories that both of them had posted. So I don't know what the blogs can be posting that I haven't already said. I'm not sure. But I've already read all of their back and forth. Yes, that's all the same stuff, y'all. Everything I just read, it's the, it's the same shit that they're posting on the blogs. That's not new. That is literally what I just finished reading. Um, what I just read to y'all was literally like within the last few minutes. 
So they probably haven't even posted the most up to date shit because I just finished reading it. Okay. My Discord is undefeated. Keisha, thank you for the super chat. If Mel was such a big hoe running around Huntsville with everyone, including his frat, he would not have wanted her back. I don't believe it. I don't think so either. And I also think that that would have been brought up immediately instead of being brought up after the fact. Like you waited until she divorced you. Now you want to start talking about, oh, she cheated on me too. Like what? They said Destiny and the Chicken Man was arguing online too. Child, I don't care. That's because Sheree gave him more clout. So the blogs going to show Martel's side more than Mel's. Child, I don't know how Sheree boring ass can give somebody more clout. She could barely get that nigga in jail clout. It don't even make sense. They not even like, okay, so they smashing. Him and Sheree are smashing for sure. But it, it, it's all strategic. It's all strategic. It's his way of trying. He's competing with Mel. I don't know if y'all have noticed this, but Martel is competing with Mel. Now that he's realized that he could not destroy her, now he's trying to best her. And I don't think he's capable. I don't. I think he needs help. And I don't think he'll ever get the help. And I think the society we live in, people are going to always be there to support a man like Martel. And then when he dog your ass out, then it'll be a different situation. But I don't think he's a good person. I don't. I don't care. I see people. I don't need to meet somebody to be able to see the way their interactions add up to me. And the way your interactions add up to me is anything that you've ever done that makes you look like a good guy was so you could manipulate that projection onto people so that you would be able to get away with doing fucked up shit. Like a lot of y'all do that. A lot of y'all lie, manipulate, and project a certain image so that people won't know who you really are. And then when you found out to be a cheating, disrespectful cunt booger, then you're going to turn around, oh, I'm a good dad and she cheated too. No, 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 no. Take the, take the lick, but you can't seem to do that. And you keep coming back trying to make Mel out to seem like she is you know, at the bottom of the fucking barrel. I don't know why, but you wanted to be married and have children with this woman. If she was cheating on you like that, you still went on to have another child with her because she had sugar mama and then she left you. So you still went on to have a whole nother baby facing a place and everything with Mel if she was allegedly cheating on you. I don't believe it. I believe like she said, she left your ass and went about her business. I also feel like if she was talking to other niggas after she got back with you, I wouldn't be mad at her either. I don't care. I don't care because it's not even just the cheating, Martel. And this is what you don't understand. If you had just cheated, this is why Marceau is not in nearly as much trouble as Martel is. Because it's not about just the cheating. Anybody can fuck up cheating a relationship, especially a long-term relationship. People get bored. You get tired. You know, like you just start looking elsewhere. Life shit happens. It happens all the time. The issue comes in when you try to blame her and then you try to degrade and validate and drive her crazy because you can't get her to forgive you again after she's figured you out to be a liar. After you made her look bad, try to blame her like you hurt her more after cheating on her. She forgave you multiple times, continue to protect your image. And then whenever you would still turn around and hurt her and she say, "Ow, oh, Martel, you're hurting me. Then you're like, why are you telling everybody that I'm hurting you? You're supposed to protect me. Don't have that conversation. Don't say that. It's ridiculous. Thank you, Nola Reeves, for the super chat. Nartel, personality would never would have never covered Mel like she has done for him if she was out here having everyone down to her buffet. Okay. Thank you for the super chat, Nola Reads. Thank you, Asada, for the super chat. Hey, Bondi, did you know Princess took Ray J back again after all the disrespect he put her through? Also, Team L. Thank you. And yes, I did. That's why I don't care about Ray J and Pranky. They like abusing each other and, and you know, that's their business. I wish they would stop subjecting us to it. However, I feel like it's a learning lesson. These are the people that y'all need to be on the lookout for. Reality TV has done y'all one favor, and I feel like it has shown y'all the plethora of ways that men can be manipulative, narcissistic, and fucked up in a patriarchal society, which means that they'll be trash-ass individuals, they'll be horrible, but there'll always be a group of women trying to fuck them because they're pick-me's, so they'll have women who will always be there to pick up the slack, so they will never, 
actually get to feel shunned for their bad behavior because there's some woman so desperate for a man that she will overlook all of his terrible uh, red flags, all of his terrible attributes. She'll overlook all of those things. So he'll never have to be any better. And as long as men keep the lie alive, which means to uh, pat each other on the back and protect each other, no matter how fucked up they are, then we're always going to be in a situation where men are going to be able to dog their counterparts out in this way and then still have people defend them and then actually have people looking at the woman as if she's doing the exact same thing he's doing. When it's not the same thing at all. It's not the same thing at all. But everybody is going to continue. Oh, male, just as bad as he is. No, she's not. No, she's not. She's literally minding her own business. Child, I ain't about to be doing this shit all day with them. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm about to get off of here in a minute. My throat is tired and I have other shit to get done. We is not about to, you know, go back and forth with Martell and Mel in, in, in on story time, you know, all damn day. Oh, now he won't uh, post his Aness wine. Child, bye. What you mean there's more? Okay, hold up. Mel says, wait a minute. These ain't no mutual friends, boo. These your people. And if they said it, they lying. Where is the proof with dates on it for accuracy? Not lies. Y'all done came together to make up, my boy. Okay? And let me be clear. Anybody I talked to when I left you could... You will, uh, oh, I don't care. Get that through your tiny brain, okay? Get that through. And you throwing out names. Didn't you text this same name to your friend's wife when trying to expose him? Now you naming her and her mama as witnesses for you? Wait a minute. And you throwing out names. Didn't you text this same name to your friend's wife when trying to expose him? Now you naming her and her mama as witnesses for you? Y'all crazy as hell. And that's why I stay away. Get some character about yourself. Okay, so wait a minute. Let's go back for a second. So, Alonda and Judy. Who is Alonda and Judy married to, y'all? <laughs> Who is Alonda and Judy married? Who, who, because Alonda and Judy sound like mother and daughter. And one of them must be the wife that he friends with the husband and, and sent pictures. Girl, is that what Mel just said? Is that what Mel just said? Hold up. Hold up, y'all. Let me let me go through them. Let me go back. Cause we <laughs> growl these stories. Okay. Yeah. Didn't you text this same name, Alonda, to your friend's wife when trying to expose him? Y'all, why does Alonda sound familiar? Y'all, why does it sound familiar? Talk to me. Um, Karen Patricia, thank you for the super chat, boo. Bondi, you earned this. <laughs> I don't see this ending well for Martel or Coleslaw shaking my head. I think Melody may get full custody and a restraining order, which is unfortunate for the kids because I do believe kids need both parents, but he's really becoming dangerous. Let me tell you something. Kids need healthy parents. Thank you. Kids need healthy parents. If you're going to hurt them kids, they don't need you. HFG, thank you for the super chat. I don't watch Huntsville, but I just listened to that back and forth, exhausting from the outside looking in. It honestly sounds like two women posting. <laughs> Alonda, that's what I thought. So basically, you throwing Alonda out there as somebody that's going to defend you, but didn't you tell Tisha that Marceau was fucking Alonda? I needed to put that in context for y'all. There you go. Okay, thank you, D Brown, for the super chat. We need some Huntsville people on the line. Child, I just cleared it up for you. I thought that's who that was, but I wanted to be sure. Alonda is a hairdresser. Alonda is the woman that everybody believes Marceau has been having the affair with. 
um maybe like two years ago maybe like at the beginning of the pandemic they went on live together tisha alanda and marceau all went on live and alanda said that she was not cheating with marceau but nobody like really ever believed it then recently i saw it came out that it, you know they were saying that it was true that marceau had admitted that he was fucking alanda but it didn't blow up like that which made me feel like it was probably nonsense and i would wait until the show came out in order to get into that but yes alanda is his cousin Martel's cousin, also Tisha and Mel's hairdresser at one point or another. When the show first started, Alanda was doing both of their hair. Uh, thank you, Nola Reads, for another super chat. Yes, Alanda was Marceau's piece, allegedly. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to be sure, girl. It's a lot of mess going on down to the Huntsville people. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Uh, delightful. Okay. First, somebody sent this to Marceau. I don't know who delightful D101 is. Somebody tell me, but this looks like something for the Facebook group, okay? First of all, you have to be considered a friend in order to be in his inner circle. He doesn't consider you a friend because he thinks you went after Mel. He called, okay, hold up. He called me a fan and not a friend when I didn't side with his BS about you. We can tell the truth and shame the devil. I have invoice and receipts. Besides, I'm talking from experience. He's not anyone's friend and just a user. Why you think he's riding in two black whips? Yeah, they're the same color, but different. And how I know about uh, MIA 17K2 got me caught up. Deceit monkey bust by default. He used the kids, lied on mail to get it, and I fell for the okie dunk the okie doke biggest regret after knowing the truth and how he really trolls he lost good friends so he can't talk about male losing friends he crapped on the ones who pulled him out of the hole from walking and carrying kids on his back it didn't take me long to see a spade is a black why haven't you you know him longer than i have all he does is roll you under the bus and put out there you're untrustworthy this dude is all about self and self only plus stealing all of y'all shine from cookbook to wine flatline wine is on the decline instead of demand stop calling friends who considers you the enemy your friend he's not and just like he told me he didn't want the kids around marcus gay ass and trying to hide behind how he really feels to to the public so he doesn't get a uh, stand back uh, hold up so he doesn't get what stand back and clear of this guy because his karma it might be cut off because his karma is coming back with interest and prepayment penalties all right well somebody said that lucky charms thank you for the super chat wasn't alanda the cousin who introduced arianne to martel at that party i don't know they never specified but i don't think so yeah that cousin name was Tori, right? It was a different cousin. That's something I was reading from the Facebook group. I don't know who Delightful D, Delightful D01 is, but Delightful underscore D01 sent that message to Marceau, basically saying that Marceau is always acting as if he and Martel are friends, but they're not because Martel is always throwing his ass under the bus. This person is also confirming about the 17K and just having, you know, receipts that Martell ain't shit. And I'm just kind of like, child. <laughs> child. Let me see. What else is going on? Um, yeah, I read all these. Thank you, Ramon Ricardo, for putting everything in order. Um, but yeah, I read all these. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to see if there was anything that I missed because all of these, I think I have went through all of these. Okay. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, there's more. Hold up. Child, y'all gonna have me all on here all day with this shit, huh? They didn't flag this video already, so it's gonna go down as soon as it's done. All right, y'all. So, and you throwing out names. Right, I read that one. There's another one after that. Hold up. Why is not letting me click on them again? Now I gotta... 
nigga freak. Okay. Damn, I thought that was more. Uh uh and I damn sure ain't worried about nobody you naming to speak on your behalf who I helped during their own situation. Boy, bye. The biggest lie of it all. Wait a minute. These ain't no mutual friend. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So she was basically saying, I don't know nobody give a fuck about what Destiny gotta, gotta say. I helped her. She ain't got nothing to say. Hold up, y'all, because it's not on there for some reason. Let me refresh. Hanging out the window with my ratchet. Okay, here it is. I just read this when I damn sure ain't nobody worried about uh, destiny. And then talking about you only been intimate with one person since we divorced. Man, ain't no way I'd be okay with some new dude. I am just starting to date, making me a part of his legal custody. <laughs> Quit trying to pit women against women. It's a name for men like you. A bitch. Um, let me see. Uh, man, y'all funny. And was on said panel calling you his 85% and Coast Law his 15%. A true liar. Yep. I don't what she said. Yep, lol. Like, which one, sir? Which one is it? Which one is it, Martel? Is she 85 or 15? Was it a mistake? What was it? What was it? Because we're confused at this point. I I don't know if um I'm going to be invited or not. I don't know if she has um solidified that or not. Um the only thing I do know is that I have talked to her manager. So Dawn said I'm gonna be there. So <laughs> if Miss Dawn say I'm gonna be there, then I'm expecting to be there. Okay. Um, but I don't know. For sure, as of yet, I haven't talked to Mel myself, so we'll see. Um, but I told him that I need to be there, so we'll see how it all works out. Thank you, Dequatia, for the super chat. Uh, from the outside looking in, I'm drained with them going back and forth. This must be a scheme that Mary Little Lamb has set up. I don't think so. I mean, honestly, I think that there's a reason for why Martel is doing all of this, and I'm not sure why. But I definitely think it's because he probably doesn't want to lose his spot on the show. Um, the way she was talking about, she don't know why he still works there. To me, he is probably antagonizing her and drumming up drama with her so that the show will be entertaining so he won't lose his spot on the show. He knows the only way that people will give a fuck about what he has going on is if he's fighting and arguing with her. So I think he tried to get in back good with her, but when it didn't work, now it's like, I'd rather just fight. Yeah, I posted the, uh, I showed y'all the video, right? Y'all saw the video I posted um, when I was going through that Martell posted of her going on a date, right? Um, and I just still kind of feel like, ooh, you thought you ate. <laughs> you thought you ate with that one, huh, Martell? Stupid ass. Rolling up on that girl while she on a date. And the dude was just like, look at this lame ass nigga, bro. I swear for God. Um... I think it's the custody case too. Yeah, but that's not like that goes without saying. You know what I'm saying? Like we already know that he's upset about the custody case, but it's something else going on too. I don't know what it is, but there's another reason for why all of this is going on and that has yet to be determined. So I can't wait to, you know, figure it all out. I can't wait for them to let us know what's T girl, but I got to go y'all. I can't be up here all day. I'm sure they will continue to go back and forth. And I'm probably going to do a Bondi Blue show tomorrow. So maybe I'll come back to y'all and we'll talk about that for a little while as well. Either way, y'all, I got to go. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. This is probably going to disappear because YouTube has been flagging all of my lives lately. Um, so until I can cut it up, it's probably going to only be available on my website until they clear it over here. Like they still haven't cleared love and hip hop, but I'm about to put it back up on um, myself instead of waiting on them to approve it. But yeah, y'all. So I, I might cut this up too. We'll see. But cause it's already been flagged. So once I get off of here, it's going to be gone, but go to bondybluesshow.com, go to shows, exclusive content. This live will still be available on the website. All right. Thank y'all so much for, you know, rolling with me today. I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day and I will see y'all in the next one. All right. Peace out.